Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this chill, relaxing Friday morning fantasy sauce stream. I'm your solo host today, Chris Razor Brownie. Penelope's in the chat, so she'll be joining us as you, our host, the chat. Co-host? Co-host. I'm already fucking it up. Ah, and I just swore a minute into the YouTube video. Ah! Ah! Damn! Uh, am I talking? I should be talking. Can you guys hear me? You should be able to hear me. Hang on. You should be able to hear me. Yeah, you can hear me. <laughs> Anyways, um, damn, it's been a long, long time since I've done this solo. Uh, how do I do this? Um, for those of you wondering, uh, we were planning on taking the week off from streaming, and we still are. Um, this is just a, you know, stream break, stream vacation, stream, so that I can relax while I'm not streaming. You know? Um, if you're interested in what you see here, consider subscribing to our Twitch. Uh, Twitch Prime is an excellent thing to use here, as uh, that's how you get the maximum enjoyment out of your Twitch Prime sub. <laughs> uh, we have a YouTube. That's where we upload all of our uh, stream recordings in glorious uh, pseudo 4K. And uh, you can find that at youtube.com slash at fantasy sauce. Uh, and we have a Discord, uh, discord.gg slash fantasy sauce. Uh, link to that is in the description below for both those of you that are on YouTube and on Twitch. Um, oh, I forgot to change the stream title because it's a chill stream and I totally forgot. Um... Yeah, let me fix that real quick. Hard space. You guys don't even know what game we're gonna be playing. We're playing Hard Space Shipbreaker. It's a um, it's a fun little uh, viscera cleanup detail style, or, or I guess no, a better current game would be um, Power Wash Simulator style uh, game. Uh, just like a uh, you know, get the job done, sort of hour and a half long experience each time. Uh, I'm going to leave the chilled out groove on the whole time we're here because uh, I like this music better than the in-game music. And I think it's just way more chill. Hard Space Shipbreaker. This is a surprisingly well thought out game. Like, they put a lot of detail into this game. So if you are looking for a like super satisfying sort of, you know, checklist game like this, highly recommend it. Uh, I play on open shift. Uh, there's a f th these are the difficulties available. Um, basically, it all I involves revives uh, for the most part. Um, standard is unlimited lives. Uh, you're on the clock, so you have a you have a limited shift time before you have to start the day again. It's kind of just like living life on hard mode. Um, limited means you get only 30 revives for the whole campaign. You got to be super careful. 
and then no revive is for um i don't know if you're just looking to not succeed because i've been playing this game for a while now i'm level a uh, rank 17 out of 30 um and uh it's i've been super careful every death i've had was due to physics glitches and so i don't understand why you would ever yeah <laughs> i live life on no revive uh god that must be tough uh, and, but I play on open shift. Um, it's sort of like an in infinite mode. It's not, it's not as, it doesn't make the game super easy. All it does is it removes the clock. So you can just, you can just keep working on the ship, the, the ship that you're disassembling until it's done. And then you clock out. Um, and, uh, I, I also turn off oxygen drain because I don't need that sort of stress in my life. Um, that's the only difference. Um, no oxygen drain and uh, no time uh, limit. Which actually doesn't really change the way the game feels at all. Um, all, all it does is it kind of removes a little bit of the, of the like stress from, from having a clock. And uh, if you've seen my Majora's Mask playthrough, you'll understand how much I hate being on a timer. Um, anyways, enough talking about the game. Let's play the game. By the way, chat, uh, emotes are in the works, but, uh, we've, uh, our artist is, uh, quite busy right now, so we might be waiting a little bit. That's okay. It's quality art. And, uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Alright. Uh, I am midway into the game. Uh, it should become pretty easy to, uh, you know, understand once we actually get into it. Um, there is kind of like a story element to it. Uh, there's a pretty well thought out progression to it as well. Like, sh the as you rank up, the ships do get more and more complex and difficult and there's some like extra dangers that get added every so often um and uh, but there's also these like background uh Hi, things that are going on like um right like we're trying to build uh or fix up uh, our own ship uh that we got uh, given by our supervisor um who is a super nice guy uh, in this incredibly terrible corporate scheme. Um, so we're looking for parts for that as we salvage uh, other ships. Um, oh, you probably also saw at the top right there. Uh, we're in a little bit of debt. That's fine, though. Um, don't don't worry about it. Uh, honestly, uh, we're doing actually pretty good because we started the game at like 1.5 billion. So um, doing pretty good. Gotta say. Uh, we don't need to upgrade any of, any of our equipment, I don't think. Cause I think I already did that. Yeah, I did. All right, let's just, let's just get into a ship. You know, let's, let's just start cutting. Um, let's see. So right now over on the right, we need a, we need a heat sink for our ship that we're repairing. Uh, which seems to be in most of these ships. Yeah. Uh, so we can just kind of pick one that has a high value just so that we can start working on that debt. 36, 12, 19, 31, 32, 11, 36. So we got two 36s available. Uh, this one doesn't have a heat sink though. So I think we're going to go for the top one. Yeah, that one has a heat sink. Uh, this is a Gecko Salvage Runner. Never worked on one of these before. Uh, hazard level uh, just indicates um, all the different hazards that could be available on it. Um, so that means that we're going to be dealing with a reactor that, if we're not careful, could explode. Um, electricity. Uh, fire hazards. You know, that sort of thing. 
it, the inside is probably going to be pressurized and we're going to have to deal with that. Otherwise, explosive decompression is an issue. You know, just a Watch out now. You're chilled out time. Oh, I'm so sorry. Kato, what in the hell are you doing? I'm so sorry, Mr. Rhodes, sir. I... I... Okay, Kato, please stop. I just... I need to hear this from you. You have received full shipbreaker training, right? Yeah, I have. These ships are, are different. They're more complicated. So you want to be trained God, on I hate every this pal, single jackass. ship that He's a middle manager. He's uh up in the yard. He's seemingly my supervisor's boss. Problem solving skills. He's here because Honestly, there's been Kato, talk of a I'm union. A you're even here. Uh happening uh, now, now. secretly in that the uh, corporation has gotten uh, has gotten wor uh, word on and um, so the corporation uh, understandably is uh, and investigating you and um, attempting to shut decision. down the union but you must which is uh, super not cool but uh, we're in space I where uh, the government doesn't matter apparently agree with your place here Cato but you are a Lynx shipbreaker, and I am committed to Oh, that. hold on, hold on. Are we shouldn't be cutting, committed? right? Oh, yeah. That's the, um... So that's that's the light bridge that goes to, like, other planets and shit. Uh, so that's kind of cool. That just kind of goes off once per day. Okay, yeah, I've never worked on this ship before. Let's, uh, l let's, let's be methodical here. So, uh, the first hazard we want to take care of, uh, is going to be the pressurized, ca uh, interior. Um, and that's going to require us to, uh, all of those green sections, those are each a compartment. Um, though a lot of them are kind of, like, all connected to each other, so it's not going to be hard to just, like, depressurize them. But we need to get all of those to be red. Uh, so that there's no air inside that can explode out when we cut something apart. I almost made that mistake and almost explosively depressurized probably a significant portion of the uh, ship. After that, um, we're going to need to uh, locate the reactor, which should be near the back. Yep, there it is. That's our purple stuff back here. Uh, and we're going to need to get that out because that's the next uh, hazard that we need to deal with. Then, after that, we're going to get rid of the electricity, which is this power generator here. Kind of a shock hazard. And then, after that, the last big hazard is going to be these radiation filters. Uh, which is actually pretty straightforward. Just got to be super careful not to bump them while you're taking them out. Otherwise, you get a whole bunch of radiation uh, particles all over the place. Which is not fun. Um, in the meantime, though, uh, we need to get the um, the cabin depressurized. I've only died four times in this game, which I'm pretty proud of. I was hoping to, to do this with uh, zero deaths. Um, just kind of like for my own personal uh, pride. Oh, good. There's something in the airlock. There's a forklift. I didn't know that we were playing Forklift Simulator. Um, can I get this out of here? Uh, I don't know if that's going to fit through the airlock. It's not. Okay, good. That's just going to live in my airlock, I guess. And now it's on its side. That's fine. So, problem I see with this is that if I do have to decompress this, this airlock... Uh, that could go moving around, which I'm super not okay with. <sighs> this is fine. We're having a nice chill time. Totally not stressing about anything. All right. Uh, oh, good. More fork. How? I mean, I guess they're like hover forklifts because it makes no sense to have forklifts in, an, in a no gravity uh, environment, right? Also, these seats should be firmly bolted down. That's a problem. Oh, is this a ghost ship? They, they told us about ghost ships. 
Uh, basically, ships that were found abandoned, not like, uh, not not routinely scrapped. I haven't experienced one of those yet. Okay, so there's our reactor, just like out in the open there. That's cool, I guess. Um, yeah, shit's all like taken apart here. Uh, let's actually just go around quickly while we can and pick up all of the things that we need to pick up. Oh, hey, a bunny. Bunny character D. There's a lot of those around. Uh, that's just a regular ass power cell. Um, oh, there's something over there. Have they found an AI node? Uh, I don't think so. I actually don't know what that is. So that's new to me. By the way, I suppose our standard rules on uh, no spoilers do still sort of apply here. Although I know it's kind of a low risk environment. Uh, this is the game that I've just been playing to chill out myself. So um, prefer if you guys didn't spoil anything too major. Though I, I get the feeling that this game might have a similar kind of plot line to Papers, Please. Um, since it kind of has that whole like corporate structure thing, there's this plot line with the uh, ship that we're repairing, which I suspect might give us the option of just like fucking off and doing our own thing uh, as, a, as a game end scenario. Um, there's paying off our debt. That's an option. Um, and there might be, there's the union thing that's kind of going on. That might be another like end, uh, option. There's also these like data drives. Uh, I wonder if there's one in this ship, uh, that kind of tells the story, uh, around the, um, the place. Like, uh, like the story behind some of these ships and, uh, sometimes the story of the, like, galaxy or whatever itself. Food is still good with a little spoil. Huh? Oh. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's just a bottle. Oh, God. I can, I can already tell this ship's going to be a pain in the butt to empty all the air out. Because, see, what happens is I can't just, like, s let all of the air out of the whole ship all at once. The problem is that to do that safely, I need to use these atmospheric regulators, which are... Where's one? Where is one? Um... Reason, this is the reason why we're doing this first, is because these atmospheric regulators require power in order to... Yeah, here's one. Oh, this one's broken, too. Fuck. That's going to suck. So we need to use these atmospheric regulators to empty the air out safely. But when you do it, uh, it closes the doors to the chamber, I guess, as a safety measure, because you theoretically wouldn't want to depressurize the whole fucking ship um, all at once when you're just like in, in space using the ship. But uh, it kind of sucks that uh, as a shipbreaker, I can't just depressurize the whole thing safely. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to do this kind of methodically. And considering all of the dead ends in this ship, like this room right here, uh, don't know how that's gonna work out in my favor. And I mean, explosive decompression is not super dangerous by itself. Like, it might fling me around a little bit, which, to be fair, could actually crack my space suit and kill me. Um, but, like, the biggest risk is to the stuff in the cabin. Anything that's not, like, secured down will go flying all over the place, potentially hitting me. And more importantly, uh, breaking the shit that uh, I make money off of. Um, and as you can tell, I've already spent like 10 minutes and I haven't done a single goddamn thing except like scout out the place. And uh, that's why I don't run on a time limit because I think the shifts are like 15 minutes long each. And I 
really don't think I could operate in that sort of environment. Just saying. Oh god, this one's actually looking to be a super huge pain in the ass to decompress. I may just, like, I need a starting point. I need, and there's like no airlocks between chambers either. An airlock is like the one thing, like, because think about it this way. If I decompress, let's say, oh, actually, some of these chambers have uh, two doors. But that's not super good. Okay, does this chamber have a, um... It does not. All right, cool. That sucks. Here, let me find a chamber here and, and, and to, as an example. Actually, let's use this dead end that I was talking about earlier. All right, so let's say I decompress this. So I have to be in the room to do it, first off. Okay, now there's no air. You can see it on the right side, unpressurized, right? Apparently, this is the crew quarters. Uh, there's no beds in here, so I doubt that. Um, also, that is a radiation filter up there. So, uh, kind of a hazardous place to have a crew quarters. Anyways, so now this room is depressurized, right? But the room out there is not. So, I can't open this door, which means I can't leave unless I repressurize the room. Kind of see how that how that uh, is a problem. Uh, now I could cut my way out and just like cut open this side panel. That's an option. Except there's the exterior hull of the ship that I still need to contend with, and that is also pressurized. So cutting open this would also just cause explosive decompression into the chamber. So that's part of the problem that I'm dealing with here. Um, hmm. By the way, uh, in case you guys didn't know and you like that sort of thing, uh, the stream does have closed captions now, uh, both on Twitch uh, and I assume I think we already had it on YouTube, but it's it's on YouTube as well. Um, so if you're interested in being seeing my words on the screen in 90% accuracy. Maybe enable those. Should be in Twitch, you know. For all, uh, for all you folks that like subtitles. Okay. Um, I don't know why I did that. I don't really have anything to do outside. Hold on. We need. So we need to figure out how to get to the um, space between the interior and exterior hall. That's what. That's uh. That's the access panel that we need to look for. Um, should be, oh, actually this could be one spot to depressurize a single chamber and be able to get to escape because, uh, this right here goes to the exterior. So that's convenient. Oh, turn on the light. There we go. That's better. Okay. Um, by the way, that little bit of plot that we got at the beginning of the shift that's all the plot we're going to get for this shift. I'm sure you'd get, like, way more plot if you were actually, um, like, on the 15-minute shift timer that the game is, I suppose, intended for. Here we go. Okay, so now we're in the area between the halls. Um, what is that? Just a bottle? Okay. Um, here's our thrusters. Those are class 2 thrusters. That's a reactor. Um, and we need to... Okay, so see now, if we decompress this area explosively, that's going to go flying around and potentially destroy the extremely sensitive and explosive uh, parts of the ship. The thruster and uh, the reactor. Uh, not super great if that ha were to happen. Um, so we need to find a way to depressurize the exterior. And there is no atmospheric regulator, typically, for the space between the halls. So now we're dealing with that. <sighs> Whoever designed these ships really didn't design it to make my life easy, you know?
Can we see Aspen? Oh, yeah, we can. They're green. Okay. Um, by the way, all of that static, that's from the reactor. When you're near the reactor or the uh, radiation filters or the generator, it, se it seems like my suit is not very well shielded, is what I'm trying to say. And that pretty much leads me to believe that we're probably experiencing a ton of radiation. But good news. Good news. Uh, if we die... Well, um, the corporation just, uh, recreates us using a clone, um, so that we can keep working and keep paying off our uh, b billion dollar debt. Woo! So, happy that that's happening, and, uh, that seems to be part of the reason why I have a billion dollar debt, is because it cost them a lot of money to set up the, our clone or whatever, which is, um... You know, nice of them, I guess. Anybody ever heard of recoupable debt? You know, that, um, oh, this is, wait, this is connected to the, oh, but that's where our, oh, and we, man, I wish we could fix things. This, if this atmospheric regulator was working, then we could decompress the entire, um, like, Compartments outside of the uh, the the crew cabins and shit. God damn it! <sighs> okay. By the way, I'm playing on controller. Uh, this game I've noticed has uh, seems to play a lot better on controller than on mouse and keyboard. I highly recommend it if you um, are planning on picking up this game to play it with a controller. Um, Kind of sucks without one, if I'm being honest, from the little experience that I had with that. Um, oh, and by the way, those of you that are wondering, why don't I just, like, cut some holes between the compartments so that even if the doors close uh, when decompressing, uh, everything just decompresses all at once. Um, the game designers thought of that and uh, said no, uh, in that the atmospheric regulators stop working. If the... Compartment is compromised. The game only only lets you use atmospheric regulators if you have not cut a hole in the compartment yet. So, um... Yeah. That's a thing that sucks. Um... Okay, so my usual strategy is to go out... Is to basically create a loop. So I can de if I can decompress the cockpit... And go out the win and go out the window. I go out the front, so cut my way out. Then I can just go back in through the airlock, decompress uh, this chamber, go out through the hole, and just com continue that cycle. But um, can't do that with these types of ships because you can't cut your way out of the hull. This hull is very thick. Uh, you can tell because the crosshair is not red. You can cut through things that are red. You cannot cut through things that are uh, gray. And I could cut my way through the glass, but I can't fit through there. It's way too thin. So that's not an option. Um, so I need to create myself a space. Oh, good. The atmospheric regulator is busted in here, too. That's just super. I feel like I'm going to be cutting a lot of holes and creating a lot of uh, decompression in this ship. Misa thinks. Hard to regulate an atmosphere if you cut a hole in the wall with a high intensity cutter. Yeah, that does seem to be part of the problem. I also don't want to be doing too much cutting because, as you might imagine, fire uh, requires oxygen. So uh, getting the oxygen out before I do anything that might start a fire it's kind of in my best interest. You know? Um, God damn it. Where do I start with this one? Usually I have like a good idea of what to start with. And yes, I'm a, a perfectionist. So yes, I don't want to be destroying a whole bunch of salvage if I don't have to. I get, I get satisfaction from doing things really, really good. Oh god, if I if I explosively decompress this room, 
that coolant tank is going to cause a big problem. Um, we don't have a regulator in here, do we? Of course we don't, because uh, these aren't closable doors. So that's all connected to this room, which has a broken atmosphere regulator. Fuck. Oh, this sucks. This is going to really suck. So I'm I'm going to have to explosively decompress this whole fucking thing. Um You know what? Fuck it. Let's just do that, I guess. So we're going to exit the ship because that's the safest place to be when Explosive decompression happens. We're going to be as far away from the atmosphere that's exiting the ship as possible. Um, by the way, you, that utility arm. Uh, did I get the... I didn't get the heat sink yet. Where is that? Because it said that that's here. Do I have to pull it out of one of the... Um, oh, right. Objects. So I'm looking for purple. Where are... The heat sinks. Looking for little purple, like rectangular things. I don't see them. Uh oh. That means I'm gonna have to pull it out of a part, which means I'm gonna lose salvage value. Shit. Yep. All right, I gotta remember to do that. Uh oh, I can pull these utility arms off. I guess that's something. That's something I can start with. Just uh, toss that in the barge. Uh, there's three places that parts go. Uh, there's the furnace. Uh, there is the processor. And then there's the barge. The barge is salvage. So that's things that don't need to be reprocessed or whatever. The And it tells you when you hover over things where they go. This says barge, for example. Um, so stuff just goes down there. Um, the stuff that pro uh, goes in the processor are... Um, like non-metallic things, so like this nanocarbon uh, goes in the processor, and then like aluminum stuff like uh, goes in the furnace. Um, pretty much works out to be that um, like the highest value stuff goes in the barge. Um, so that tends to to be my priority. Salvage. Um, Though I tend to aim for like a 96, 95 percent or higher. Uh, up! Don't you go flying off. 95 percent uh, salvage uh, rate. That's what I kind of aim for, uh, which should get me all of those goal marks at the top of the screen. Um. And uh, kind of maximize uh, what I get out of this. Now, a better gamer would recognize that uh, going fast would actually be more efficient for my time. But, um, fuck that shit. I'm a perfectionist. Baby. Wow, there's a lot of arms on this thing. Call it an octopus uh, ship. Yep, that's the that's the comedy that you all tune in for. Honestly, I don't even really look at the label anymore. Like, I just kind of know where things go. Uh, the game is super good about that. Like, doesn't really uh, confuse me where something goes typically. Okay, how am I going to decompress this in the safest way possible? I think I just do it from the back. That way, hopefully, things won't hit the reactor. Uh, if things... Alright, let's go fuel deal with that. Wow, I've available. just... I went through all of my fuel just... Just, like... Checking the place out. Oh, yeah, this is a ghost ship. Look at all that damage on the outside. Like, they didn't need to make this shit so pretty, but they did! This game is beautiful. I don't even know who I don't even know who made this game. Like it's it's nobody I've 
really heard of. But, god damn, this is great. You know? Just like, beautiful time. Having a great time over here. All right, let's go for thrusters. If the ship explodes, well, fuck it. We'll just go to go to a different ship. Uh, and you guys are gonna have a great time watching me uh, blow up. So I already started one of these, so I might as well do that one, I guess. All right, that's about to go flying. Uh, so I'm gonna stay off to the side. And uh, here we go. <laughs> So yeah, that hurts. I don't like that. Just having a chill, chill stream. Just a nice, chilled, relaxing stream. You know, nothing could go wrong. Nothing at all. Uh, yeah, that's, there's all my ship. Just all those colored pieces. That's like half of the fucking, look at that red line at the top. I just lost three potential goals. Ah! <laughs> you know what? Maybe we just like grab a new ship. Let's just grab a new ship. We're just that that just didn't happen, okay? New ship, new ship. Maybe we get one that that has a, a working atmospheric regulator this time. All the team at Lynx would like to wish you a happy and productive day. Thanks, Lynx. You too. God damn it. All right. Let's try this again. Uh. Oh, good. Is that the same one? No, it, it didn't, doesn't have a heat sink. So th there is a, a level of randomization to the game, um, which is to my benefit in this case, hopefully. But it doesn't have a heat sink, so I, I kind of I need to do a different one. Ooh, ooh. A ghost ship. That's so. That's a, a ghost ship. Okay. That's definitely a ghost ship. Unknown. Last owner? Question mark. No pictures. Big reward. Big value. Actually, that's weird. Usually, the the salvage goals at the bottom are based on the value of the ship, right? Like, see how this thirty-five thousand has nine different tiers of salvage goals. Whereas this ghost ship has less. That's weird. I guess that's specific to ghost ships. Okay. Um, so this one's a 32 thou. Has a level seven, has a heat sink. Uh, this one's also 32, no heat sink. 35, heat sink. Uh, this one's 34. This one has a heat sink, and I kind of I have never done a ghost ship before, so let's do that. All right. Reconstructed title colony ship for sale cheap. Oh, I, I didn't even read that part. Okay, so Scott, from watch out now. Oh right. I wish I could skip those. Is there like is there a button to skip? Grapple, cutter, scanner, miscellaneous, interact, toggle task list. Oh, I didn't know there was a button for that. Right hand grab, left hand grabs, uh, no, 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 hut off. Menu. Damn it. All right. I'm just going to have to listen through that. You know what? Uh, let's... 
take the speech volume and just drop it. We don't need to listen to, the, to their uh, bullshit now. Is that? It didn't go down. Oh, no, it did. Okay, good. It's just very non-linear. Oh. oh, I had the music on a little bit. Let's get that get rid of that. Okay. Um, so, ghost ship. Uh, what I've been told about these is that these are ships that were found abandoned. Uh, they weren't, like, uh, used for a long time, and then the company that owned them, like decided to scrap them these ships nobody knows who owned them they're just they were just found like like they are and what that means is that there might be an increased hazard level it also means that there might be like a bunch of story behind it that we're gonna find inside so that's exciting uh, this is a freighter specifically uh, I've worked on this one this type of ship before usually there's like freight compartments or uh, like like shipping containers kind of attached to the outside. Uh, I don't see any of those this time, so that's interesting. Um, let's go and see what we uh, we, what we got in, in here. Uh, first of all, let's do a quick scan. Uh, it's all pressurized. That's to be expected at this hazard level. So uh, not super unhappy about that. Um, first of all, we've got an easy thing that we can do with this type of ship. We can, uh, this, uh, this has a fuel tank that we're going to flush before we get started. That way, less chance of it exploding. Um, what flushing the fuel tank does is it takes all of these, like, fuel pipes and empties them. And so the only big explosion risk is this fuel tank right in the center. So let's not shoot that with any lasers, if you wouldn't mind. Um, this ship is also super good because the compartments are separated. So the front area is where all the reactor, or no, excuse me, the um, the uh, power generation is, uh, as well as all the crew stuff. Um, so you can kind of see there's the radiation filter. Um, that's interesting. There's a coolant tank and a fuel tank at the bottom there. Um, but yeah, there's the, there's the generator. Uh, we've got all of our fuel stuff in the middle. And then at the back is our reactor. And we've only got one engine, uh, class two reactor. Um, pretty straightforward. So we can start at the back, uh, decompress this whole back section, t take care of the reactor, and then move on to the front section. Overtime done? All right, uh, this is a class three cut uh, point, so that means we've got to use a demo charge to do it. Oh, I can turn those, didn't know that. So we're gonna do that on both sides at once, just because that's for style points. Oh, oh, uh, you know what? No, we're gonna save it for our Monday stream. Um, Penelope, hold on to your good news until Monday. For the, for the stream. But Penelope got some good news that she, she'll probably want to talk about on Monday. Super exciting stuff. Um, oh, let's... Uh, all right. Fire in the hole. Man, those got really wimpy uh, since I upgraded them to not be super explosive. All right, so let's pull those two pieces down. Those are always barge, so don't even have to look at them. Um, we've got a cockpit over here and a cockpit up front. Honestly, don't know why the ship has two cockpits. Might be compensating for something. Um, okay, so let's start working on the back. We got to deal with the reactor before we deal with the power generator. Otherwise, uh, we won't be able to deal with the reactor. And usually we have to just explosively decompress uh, this part of the ship, or at least uh, a portion of it, but we're going to try to avoid that. Um... No, don't tell it now! It's better if you can do it on voice. 
Unless you want to join me in VC. Um, okay. So we can go out here. Um, let's pick up the little bits and bobs that uh, we use to repair our ship. Oh, right. I have to do that without the skin. Uh, there was another piece in here, wasn't there? But I saw it from the outside. Oh, yep, there it is. Oh, it's in the cockpit. Okay. Right, it's in the little compartment underneath the cockpit. I gotta keep my eyes open for a data drive, by the way. Uh, that's gonna be uh, blue. Actually, I think I see blue over there. So that should be interesting. Uh, there's actually no risk of that flying away, so I'm gonna hold off on that. Oh, good, another broken atmospheric regulator. Fuck. Oh, a wild Penelope appears. My, um, my voice set settings are messed up, so I have to restart my computer again. One second. Oh, no. All right. It's bad. I'll be back. Okay. I am definitely going to need to decompress this whole section. Uh, all right. Let's get out of here. Let's decompress it. And then uh, we're going to hear Penelope's. Check. Oh, Did there you check one two? There yeah. we go. No. Voice meter banana loves to corrupt my sound card. <laughs> it's so wild because I don't have any problems with it. It's it's got to be something to do with my Audio Technica mic. I might if, if yeah uh, related to my good news. If I if I do end up saving some money, I might get myself a sound deck. Uh, if I can hire that. Uh, hang on. I I'm to... I'm excited to help you with technology stuff again because I and that's my favorite yeah. part about, about having friends is being their tech nerd sometimes. But the thing is, I'm gonna have to buy another mic if I get that, because I'm gonna have to get the I'm gonna have to get the one that's not USB. Which sucks. Yeah. Good news is that one's cheaper than the USB one. Is it really? Yeah, because it doesn't have any just... like it doesn't have as much technology inside of it, and it's just like the mic, and it goes out to the interface. It doesn't have to translate it for the computer, and it's like fifty dollars yeah. cheaper. Hey. Downside also, is you got to pay like a hundred dollars for uh, an audio interface, so it doesn't. It kind of doesn't work out to be cheaper in the end. But yeah, I guess that's fair. But no, <laughs> I might uh, just get the audio interface and then get the new mic down the road. Well, you can't do that because the audio interface needs to be able to plug into a mic. Well, problem. I mean, I'm, I will, the thing is, I might buy them one at a time and then just do a full upgrade when I have the components. Oh, just like kind of mm -hmm. finance stored, that shit. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, no, I wanted to jump in and also sorry for interrupting your stream. What do you uh, mean? You're a part of this show. I know I'm a part of the show, but you were doing you were doing your sh your stuff. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, well, I wanted to tell everybody I actually got a really nice promotion at work. Yeah. And it's it's a really nice it's a really nice new position and it's going to open up a lot of opportunities for me so hopefully it's going to take a little stress off my back but um it's something we i've been super hyped for i've been telling razor about it and now we're super hyped for it so i'm hopefully going to be able to get that all sorted probably by monday honestly but i won't start the new position till um uh probably around <laughs> Oh, don't worry about that, hun. You, you, <laughs> what, what you fail to understand is I actually have a key for hard ship, hard spaceship brick. Oh wow! In, in my pile of keys. Well, I mean, yeah, but I, I just meant that you might want to watch more live if you're gonna oh. be here. Oh yeah, 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 that's fair. My voice sounds shit today. It doesn't. It's your ears so that are hearing shit. That's that's the problem. Ah, uh, good. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, that's a fair point. <laughs> you know, I can't tell if I sound more or less femme because of how my voice sounds today. <laughs> it's it's the morning. Everyone sounds deeper in the morning. It's fine. Do you think I sound deeper? No. I sound no, deeper. I don't ah! think so. <laughs> I mean, not really. It's 
And why did you say her? everyone sounds deeper in the morning? <laughs> Fucking that's uh. things you don't say to a trans girl, part two. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody sounds deeper in the morning. What's up, best cake? Anyway, uh, I was the, re the the comment I made before about the reconstructed title "Colony Ship for Sale Cheap" was yeah. just because you were mentioning there, there's no pictures, there's no idea thing. That wasn't oh. in the game. That was that was a joke about the, how sketchy that sounds. Like it sounds like a Facebook Marketplace ad. <laughs> uh, used uh, like new condition. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Me meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm looking at this ship and I'm like, um. It looks like some teenagers have spray painted the shit out of it, and uh, Run, runs great. Runs great. What's that? It runs great. Fresh oil change. Oh Fresh yeah, yeah, change. yeah. Uh, safety. Um, new transmission. New brakes. Um, yeah. No rust. New tires. No rust. Yeah. <laughs> Fifty thousand miles. <laughs> God, what is that? What is that in kilometers? Like seventy-five thousand? I don't know. I think so. I think it's like about that conversion uh, rate. Fifty. Uh... Also, good news. I'm going. I have. Um, okay, Razor's probably going to be oh, mad at me for not right. doing this already, but I'm going to be upgrading my Ethernet environment. I'm going to be using the setup I had back in my old house. Uh -huh. uh, I just need to get. I need to bring down my Wi-Fi for like an hour to get all that set up. And then once it's back up, then yeah, I'll be able to get a lot more stable of an Ethernet environment, which is going to be fun. It's just an internet connection. Ethernet environment? What the heck? The fucking the, the thing we have with the with the TP yeah. links. Yeah, you're gonna have a wired connection. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, it's kind of. It's not literally. I mean, what, it's did those kind finally of arrive? Ethernet. Oh yeah, definitely. They they yeah. arrived. Uh, they arrived. Uh, they arrived at the same day your controller did. <laughs> no tire kickers. I know what I got. Exactly, Yodi. Exactly. <laughs> make 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 me an offer. I won't take lower than than the amount I'm asking, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best I'd, offer yeah, only. Man. But if you offer me lower, then you you can take a hike. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. I love um, that. Hold That's on. I'm so gonna I'm gonna great. pop the cork here. So one sec. Okay. Maybe you're gonna pop the cork. Wait. Oh, is it not? Is not about to depressurize? Oh. Yeah, I did. But there's no avoiding it because you, 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 there's there's no way not to explosively de decompress that part of the ship. So I just had to do it. Um, but oh, that it was, was a soft decompression. That it was, was like, a lot safer um, this time because there wasn't anything that that was gonna fly around inside, which was kind true. of the problem last time. <laughs> there was like um. Uh, let me pause the stream on my side so that way I don't, I'm not streaming this in two different places. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. Because like that was just like. A very subtle, like um, uh, a fresh colonoscopy. The other one was explosive, <laughs> like travesty. Like, yeah. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, this this one was just like polite. That one was <laughs> go our, home early. Did our atmosphere regular fell off fall off of the wall? Why? What? Yes. Well, God you, damn you, you it! You compressed it. No, this part is still pressurized. Why did it fall off the wall? Because it's under a lot of pressure. Jeez, why are you yelling? God damn it. I think I did this in the wrong order again. Um, okay. Hold on. Let me, uh... Did you pop your cork too early? Sheesh. <laughs> I don't think that should happen. Like, I've never had that happen before. These things... It usually... happens to everybody sometimes. God damn it. Don't All right, let's put that... Let's, let's get, pull it out of the airlock so it doesn't go flying around when I decompress this part. Um, This one, too. If I, pause, if I pause the Twitch stream, will I still be able to see comments as they, can roll, as they roll in? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. I didn't know... I know if you watch, like, a VOD of a live stream, the comments are simulated to roll in as they did yeah, when yeah, the VOD yeah. played. So I wasn't sure if me pausing this right now would stop that. No, no, the, thankfully, because it's live, it's uh, that's not an issue. Um, awesome. Okay, there's nothing awesome. else awesome. loose in here. So we're gonna now go in, I guess, explosively decompress this part too. Yay. Oh boy. <sighs> <laughs> Remember, don't, don't blow it too early. It's Thankfully, I got all the debris out, so it's not gonna 
hopefully explode anything. That down there. I See, I love the fact that when when Razor is doing this by himself, it's it's so much more about like making small jokes here and there, but like making sure he's engaging with the audience. But when I come in, it's all fucking colon and 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 coming early jokes. It's I what? bring I'm bringing the real the real comedy here. I mean, yeah, you are. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, how do, how do I decompress this part? Um, or do I just First you not? sit it down. You know, I'm just not gonna care it. I'm, I'm not gonna care about it for now. Uh, oh wait, no, no, I have to because I I need to be able to open the. Okay, hold on, hold on. We're gonna go yeah, in no, there no. and we're just gonna do it. We're yeah, gonna... no, you're gonna sit it down on a couch. You're gonna talk to it about its feelings. You're gonna ask how it's doing it. It's going to resent you at first, but then it's going to eventually open up to you, and that'll help it decompress. Uh huh. Go on, sit it down with it. Talk about talk with it about its father. Okay. Um. Uh, I know you're going through hard times. Uh, I'm here for you. Uh, whenever you want, uh, whatever you want to talk about, uh, I'll listen. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, oh no! Uh -oh, uh -oh. Too much, too much. You over the floodgates. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Massive oversharing. <laughs> oh. God. God, this game is gonna be so fun. For, I'm actually downloading it right now. I'm actually a oh, little you are? under. I'm actually about seventy percent right now. Woo! So, I'm I'm pretty I'm one thousand percent sure there's like a tutorial thing I'm gonna have to sit through. So don't get your uh, you can you can skip up. the tutorial if you want. But I would recommend Ooh, nice. uh, if you have not watched anyone like experience. No, I'm gonna go in there blind. I'm I'm gonna like oh, look at it. Like, uh... You're gonna be my tutorial razor. Well, I mean, that's I, more, I more if, fun if, it is if anyway. you want, we can make this a uh, a thing where like I help you through it because I I kind of love doing that. That's we've are had, you gonna, we had fun are you with that in in KSB. <laughs> Young dumb Hendren gets advice from Sagely Kovold about how to take apart a spaceship. Uh, <laughs> fucking, I don't I don't know how this is gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> but I like this idea. I am your space guru. I've helped you with KSP, and I'll help you with this too. Oh god, that'd be a really actually. And I don't think that crossover would work, but it'd be an interesting if they could manage a crossover between these two, this game and KSP. I kind of interesting, yeah. I I think that it's very not functional uh, of a crossover though, because uh, the ships are wildly different. Like. Huh. Like the, the is it like a battery thing or what? Do you you set up uh you set up those lightning lures between? Oh um so I I can grab things or um these are these are tethers they're basically like elastics uh -huh. um they they they, oh, okay. they pull uh two things to, closer to each other and since I set it up against the wall of the berth um the berth. I it, it'll just pull it away from uh, the rest of the ship that that's. I kind of use them for like really heavy stuff that's going to move really slowly so I can go and do something else while it's moving. That's kind of the idea. You know, parallelizing your uh, your workflow. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. Um, also, so that I don't have to wait like an eternity just like pulling that thing. Also, because it, it actually kind of turns out to be a little dangerous to um to pull like really big things because either you get impatient and you and you and you fuck something up or um physics fucks up just because games do that and mm -hmm. um it you know launches itself at you uh with enough energy to kill an elephant if that okay. elephant were wearing a spacesuit in space um you know as elephants do yeah yeah in the One year twenty three hundred or whatever. Yeah, right. no. Loxodons, loxodons. Uh huh. Can you, can we talk about that by the way? Are we excited for the future? Oh, where that's we the wrong have, place. Like... It doesn't go there. Thankfully, the barge is very forgiving. It doesn't. Sorry, what were you saying? Are we excited for the future where we might have things like loxodons, or like like people? Like, what? are you excited for Frank the loxodon to be walking around? I mean, I. I'm interested to know why why Frank took a human name. Uh, that sounds like a like a story behind it. Um, well, but, I mean, no, um, but like think about it. It's like if, I, we, I'm, if we do, I'm I'm crack I'm, I'm concerned by your 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 uh, belief that the future holds Loxodon specifically. I mean, they're gonna hold a lot of other kinds of 
I, I'm saying Loxodon, but Loxodons are probably not what they're gonna be called. But like with um with genetic engineering and stuff, and like I feel like people somewhere are gonna get to do the mixing of animal and human DNA to such an extent that they might actually be viable. Do you? And, and I, mean, I, I suspect that it's going to be heavily taboo. Because, I, I mean, every every science fiction uh, like uh, media that I've seen where there's like body modifications, uh, there's always been like the purists who, uh, you know, think their kids should remain human or whatever, you know. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's exposed a reactor right there. Um, mm -hmm. If I disconnect it right now, it will probably explode. So in, uh, with a class two reactor, what we first need to do is we need to disconnect the coolant lines, uh, which are in here. And is then this we multiplayer? Uh, no, I looked. I would love for this uh, to be multiplayer. Was, that's why I downloaded it. Just, I was like, oh yeah, I'll just jump in your game. But oh, it's not. Yeah, I, I wonder know. If it's a mod. Uh, game doesn't really have mod support, as far as I can tell. Which really, really sucks. And it doesn't look like it's in like the, that early access sort of thing where it's in constant uh, production or a constant development. So I don't know if we're going to ever get a multiplayer for this, but maybe. Yeah. All right. Next, we're going to eject our thruster, and then we have a little bit of time to take care of the, of the reactor. So now the reactor is in meltdown, so we're going to disconnect that. And we're just going to carefully, don't jostle it, uh, toss it at full force into the uh, into there. And for some strange reason, once it's in there, it is no longer going to explode. Science is a wonderful thing. You'd think they could just put that over the entire ship, but um, apparently not possible. What's an entomotarian? The fuck? It's asking me my meal preference inside the link oh. salvage and confirmation. I kind of appreciate that, that, that one of the meal preferences is no plastic. Yeah, plastic free. I'm going to do plastic free. I, 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 I did chicken. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, please agree to each team. I have no criminal record in Terran or Martian zones. Ah, fuck. Well, I guess I can't play. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, that's fine. I'm not a member of or associated with the Workers' Union. Yeah. I actually have associated with the Workers' Union, so that would... I have. <clears throat> not I used to be Teamsters' Union because I worked at Big Five, so I had to be Teamster. Uh... Uh -huh. Oh wow! They even make you say, "I'll vote for Chancellor Chung Zhang in the Pan American." Senate yeah, election yeah, yeah. Night. They're really like laying on thick with the um with the like dystopian uh, futurist uh, corporation thing. All right, I skipped training. Okay. Okay. Uh. <laughs> I love that enthusiasm you brought to <laughs> You sound like a middle manager when someone says, yeah, those fucking videos you had, we I was supposed to watch for the last hour, didn't watch them. I'm, I'm perfectly capable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just have to sit there and be like, who the fuck did I hire? <laughs> okay. Um, oh, by the way, if you I'm hover over a, a thing that's pressurized, it'll actually say danger, D-N-G-R. So that's useful, okay. I guess. Um, but I so this whole section is pressurized. I need to depressurize it now. The problem is, is the only way for me to do that since the regulator in there is broken, um, is cut a hole in it. Um, because there's no easy like cut point that I can access like these like these points here that won't uh, just fling this thing straight into there, which I don't want. So you wanted to go down into the barge. Uh, well, no, different parts of this go different places. The, so the, oh, the like, outside panels of this go to the processor. The glass always go to the furnace. Glass is just a furnace thing. Uh, and this tube here is also furnace. Um, so I kind of have to work around that. 
Um, I could go to the front section and like disconnect the power next, but honestly not super necessary with this ship design. Cobalt uh, are inherently a spacefaring race. I just saw that. Uh, I guess, yeah. I mean, they could be. Yeah, I think I think Cobalt would be a great spacefaring race, honestly. I'm pretty sure there's like oh. a lot of science fiction stuff that that has like a lot of diverse races that are from different planets, and and then most of them tend to have like um, a lizard-like race, you know. So. Yeah, I can see it. Small adaptable, like sp small spaces. I don't know how they do in uh, zero G though. Feel like uh, there's a lot of flailing. Kind of, uh, I. This is why I think that a mod for Kerbal Space Program that that turns them into kobolds would fit so well. Kobold Space Program, yeah. Yeah. By the way, are you using your controller? No, I'm using my keyboard and mouse. I can actually get my controller. I don't right, recommend right it. Here. Yeah, you're gonna want find control on this game. Hang on, let me, let me Actually, it should be charged. Uh, I just use mine wired, honestly. That's, but actually, that's just because yeah, I, I don't like wired. dealing with like low batteries or signal delay or anything. All right, um, let's just cut a hole. Delay. It's We're gonna. Very good controller. Well, it is, yeah, but uh, wireless will always have a delay over wired. Um, until they figure out quantum entanglement as a uh, signal processing method. Um, okay, we're going to cut a hole, and by hole I mean slit, and uh, hopefully I don't get flung all over the place because I'm right in uh, line with where the air is going to be coming out. So here we go. Okay, <laughs> Hey, there we Options. Go. Controls? Oh, it just de it, it, it automatically has a controller option, so you don't even need to change anything. Just plug in your well, controller not, and go. Uh, it's not responding to my controller. Oh, um, right. This uh, first lesson on your Ghoulie Kit uh, King Kong 2. Uh, at uh, the top, uh, you, you, there's two buttons with with some lights, right? Yeah, I have it set to D for direct input. Uh, no, you don't want that. I don't? You want it set to the Windows logo. Okay, hang on. Uh, D D is like a last resort if nothing else works. Okay. Yeah, because uh, D is like the oldest form of like controller signal processing, and so it's it's gonna not have as as many features. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Is nice. Um, another thing, uh, for you, um, while you're on the computer, if you're not using it for your Switch. Um, if, while it's powered on, press the cog icon and and press and hold it and, and then tap the plus button once. It'll give a short uh, buzz. That, switch, uh -huh. that switches the A, B, X, Y buttons so that uh, they're actually going to be... A B X Y. Oh, thank you, God. Yeah. I was like, I was looking. I was like, man, I'm gonna have to fucking remap this thing sometime because I was just pressing the wrong buttons. Oh yeah, no. Uh, and honestly, actually, this game is weird because the way that like the buttons are uh, given to you on screen and like mm -hmm. the button decisions that they made, um, it feels like they actually designed this game with a Switch controller in mind, like a Nintendo controller, because A A is up is like is uh is up b is down and like the only time that ever makes sense is if a is above b on the controller you know ah uh, so how do i oh wait wait whoop i'm flipping all around <laughs> okay uh, i have to click my sticks to rotate myself good yeah and if you if you press both at the same time that's the brakes Oh, nice. Yeah, so you, you'll want to get used to using that one in particular because uh, that'll be both your safety net if you do get flung somewhere and also uh, just kind of makes it way more controllable. That's okay. why I'm not just constantly floating all over the place. Um, okay, so we've depressurized this whole section. We're not going to do anything else with it until we depressurize and get rid of the, um, the electricity in the front. Uh, you won't have to deal with any of this shit to start with. You can just like start tearing apart your first ship. So that's oh yeah, because I, I was looking at the ship, I was like, man, do I just do I just do I need to figure out if it's gonna okay, hang on? Yeah, no, so. they they start you out super simple. Like the the progression in this game is really really easy. Like it 
perfect. Okay, this cutter is not doing anything. Um, Why? Gosh, maybe we should just like watch you play. Oh, please don't. Oh, shit. Fuck. <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> I blew up a fuel tank. Did you just cut into a fuel tank? Yeah, I didn't mean to. I meant to grab it with my grabber, my grapple, but I oh. was on my cutter. Oh, no. You know, I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Hang shame on. that the chat's not experiencing what you're doing. Hang on. Wait. What do I do things? I got a minute. Okay, okay. I'm, okay I've got it. Yeah, just, just, just get a feel for the controls first. You know, s switch yeah. between your 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 uh, equipment and. Uh, I have a cutter and a grabber. Yep, that's all you got for now. Super okay. simple. Okay. So I switched my cutter to start cutting stuff off. Yeah. Okay. So then I just I just shoot the things, right? Yep. Eep. Okay, eep, eep. 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 Ah. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> that thing was way heavier than I thought it was. Um, okay. Say, you're saying I'm above cut grade. It does? Yeah. Uh, okay, so now now hang on. So you you don't and from for almost every ship you don't you don't need to cut anything other than cut points. So if you're not oh. if, if you're not cutting something that's yellow, like bright yellow and usually striped, you're you're doing you're that's not what you should be cutting okay yeah um but uh no we're, we're uh so if you it, you can typically just take apart the entire ship just by dealing with cut points oh okay um, gotcha yeah uh the exception is there are some items that won't have a cut point but if you hover over with your grapple It'll, uh, and it gives you like this, uh, let me see if I can find one. Um, th there'll be like extra arrows around it, kind of pointing outwards. Uh, if you grab and hold on to it, it'll actually detach after a few seconds. Oh, okay. So I yeah. can just grab and hold on to like, okay. uh, so it. Like, to like, like chairs on the, like a lot of stuff on the inside will be able to be detached just by just holding on to it and, and for a few seconds. A little, bar, a little bar will show up I telling see. you that it's, that it's happening. Yeah. Did I just I fucked up this antenna too? God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I should not be trusted with a cutter. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Chad? Is it is it more enjoyable to not be able to see what she's doing and just hear her swear at at, at everything that she's doing wrong? Yes, obviously. <laughs> so car okay, a cargo hatch goes to the barge. Okay, I see how this works. Yep. Wait, you have a barge already? What the fuck? I thought that was yeah. like tier four or something. No, I mean like up, like the thing, the, the thing below the ship that I yeah, throw that's the barge. Into. Yeah, I'm throwing shit in, shit in there. Oh, I just that threw a that, that in there. is not available at the very beginning of the of the tutorial. So I guess that uh, means that you uh, that that's just part of the tutorial then. Yeah. Boom. Okay, so I got an antenna. So then, barge. Cool. Oh, this has to go to the furnace. Okay. So, because I ruined it. Good. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, destroying something changes where it goes. I'm guessing ruined stuff almost always goes to the furnace. Typically, though, like some of the stuff that goes to the barge, if you ruin it, can can still go to the processor. I think it's it's almost like a gradation thing. Like the the barge is is most expensive stuff, then the then the processor's next, then the furnace. So that's kind of oh, okay. that that's usually how your workflow should be. If you have barge stuff, you should and that's like easily accessible. You should start with that. Typically, though, like th that rule goes out the window once you're dealing with like high hazard stuff, like. Uh, um, pressurized cabins or um, generators or reactors those those should be your top priority to, to just get those out of your way then you can just kind of smooth sailing through throughout the rest of the ship um is there like modes for the cutter i, I feel like i just yes. sliced something in half completely there are I modes yes okay um so uh 
the, the there's a pinpoint mode which you, you should just use on every cut point uh, if you can um, just because just vaporizing the whole thing is way easier um, uh -huh. and then if you press right on the d-pad it switches modes so that you're you, oh, you, 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 you then go into line cutting and then you, when you're in line cutting you can use left trigger to change the orientation oh, okay that's what I was in I was in um uh, line cutting mode. That's why I need pinpoint mode. Good. Right. Okay. All right. So now, I just need to pull these pinpoints off. Cool. Now I'm dealing with a new section, so I gotta go look for stuff to pick up. Neat. Oh, this this ship is named the Saucy Oberon. Really? Yeah. Neat. Uh, what are these? Oh, AI nodes. Hey, you found one. Uh, he said something about them, and I did not listen. Uh, wh what do I do with AI? No, it says destroy. It it says I'm supposed to destroy them. There's a lot of them. Is th is this what makes it a ghost ship? Uh, <laughs> I mean, something had to make those ghosts, right? Um, hey Yodi, can you just like share with me what I'm supposed to do with those because? I didn't listen to what my supervisor told me. I was not paying <laughs> attention. <laughs> I hope Yodi's like, well, I don't know. I don't want to spoil you on that. Well, don't prompt him to, to, to say that. That'd be fucking amazing. Yodi, you should totally say that. Well, now it's not going to be nearly as funny. Uh, also... Pause. <laughs> I'm hilarious. Is there so pipe junctions are okay for me to cut, right? Uh if it's, it's yellow. If it's yellow th then yes, but hold up. Cuz uh, for those you you'll want to you want to plan ahead. If you haven't had a chance to rem like uh flush the fuel from the system yet, if if it's a fuel pipe, as when you cut that pipe junction, the f the pipes around it will ignite. Oh, well, I actually cut it just a minute ago, and it was actually connected directly to a fuel tank. Um, well, the good news is I didn't die, so that's nice. Damn it. That wasn't fast enough. I mean, technically you were. If I, if you, if, if I was dead, then you wouldn't have been, but I suppose you, you, you did it. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just trying to get this fuel tank over to the bar to the barge because I don't want this floating around while I'm trying to deconstruct a you don't ship. have you don't have tethers yet do you no I don't no, or at least that, I don't that's an upgrade thing right um like the first upgrades you'll want to aim for are tethers and charged push um because those the two of those help you deal with with a big shit I see Seriously, Yodi, tell me what the AI things do. I don't I don't want ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> Yodi. Yodi be strong. Don't listen to him. If I just shoot them, I'll just shoot them. Swear to God, guns blazing! I can't just like pull them off the wall. Okay. This is supposed to go to the furnace, my bad. Um, what is that? She shoots. She scores for one flat rate. Huh? Geico. Uh, okay. What parts of this are pressurized? The whole thing. Good. Okay. I guess we open this door then. All right. Uh, oh, my lights weren't on. Now my lights are on. Okay. What is that sound? I think it's the AI things, and they're they're freaking me out. Hey, I don't know how to tell you this, but in in most science fiction settings, AI are kind of like the evil super Hitler Nazi things. So you best be careful. Those things are deadly. Wait, what? There's an AI thing on the outside of the ship? That's torture. Oh yeah, there's one just right there. 
Oh, oh wait, it gives me a description. The germination tool of the machine god. They, they emit yeah, another no, worldly not... hum and can only be destroyed by fire. What the fuck? Yeah, look, I'm not gonna lie to you, Chief. That sounds just about normal for an AI in a science fiction <gasps> story. <laughs> that sounds terrifying. So that explains the otherworldly hum. Uh, what's gonna happen when I destroy one? I'm 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 nervous now. Uh, the best way to destroy an AI is to hurl it into the nearest star, not to take any chances. Uh huh. Okay, hold on. So let's let's focus on uh, depressurizing first of all. Uh, let's see here. So this compartment's just gonna have to be explosively depressurized. So thankfully, there's nothing super dangerous to be flung around. Okay, so we can just kind of leave that the way it is. Let's close that door. Um, we'll, de we'll decompress that in a minute. Um, if I just walk past these, are they going to hurt me? I'm just going to go do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Okay, they didn't, they didn't hurt me. So they just exist and are spooky. Well, it's a, it says this is a pickup. Does that mean I just grab it or something? Or... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, you can just pick those up. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the early game pickups are like refills, free refills, basically. Oh, um, okay. Oh, good. There's hydroponic li uh, cabinets in here, which means they were growing some fucked up shit. Should I open Probably, it? Yeah. Probably not. No, don't. You'll get don't get the worst <laughs> thing imaginable. I'll get space herpes. Yeah, no, no one wants space herpes. No, 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 no. That's dangerous. You do not want to see the suppository you need to take to cure space herpes. I mean, don't I? I mean, what? No, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> what is wrong with me today? I'm, I'm just bringing all sorts of weird humor. Uh, okay, what's in this compartment? Uh, there's our uh, power core thingy. Generator. Uh, haven't we haven't no located a um a data uh thingy yet on this one, which is interesting. Um. By the yeah, way, can I, can, can, can I just say I was internally betting uh, that if I if I streamed solo that you would join me and uh anyways and just like oh fuck it'd become a duo stream you hush <laughs> i lost a salvage bowl oh no yeah i didn't i don't know how to drain the pipes so that was my fault uh okay so from what i've experienced the earlier engines um sometimes so there's typically a, like a like a switch like a lever um and uh, on some of the like engines, the only uh, the the best way to get to the lever, which is like on the inside of the engine, is you have to cut, uh, pull the, the the debris away, and while the pipes are on fire, at, like a fuse, you have to rush in there past the flaming like pipes and shut them off before they explode. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that sounds terrible. It it is a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna destroy this AI node and hope that I don't get haunted. Okay. Oh, good! It screams yeah. when you do that. Yeah, because you you killed a sentient thing. Chris is gonna scream. I got an achievement for it. Good. I guess that's what we're supposed to do. Yep, that's terrifying. I can't just like accept the AI nodes into my life. Why not? I hope that becomes an I'm option later. Spinning around this place like absolutely insane. Oh, I didn't get that one. Oh, no, I did. Okay.
Oh, the AI has gone haywire. It's wreaking havoc on all the ship's systems. Does that mean that, like, it could just decompress the, uh, the ship with me in it? I'm sorry, Razor. I cannot do that. Yeah, don't, don't do that. No? No. I, I, I've, I've said it before. I, I appreciate games that go, uh, that, that add, like, a horror element where the game itself is not a horror game. Like, especially just like when it comes straight out of nowhere, that that shit is the best kind of horror, because there's no like anticipation or anything. That's uh -huh. that's that's part of the reason why I appreciate the spiders in Satisfactory, or no, not Satisfactory. Excuse, excuse me, Factor. No, it's, yeah, Satisfactory. I got it right the first time. You were you were right. Yeah, it was Satisfactory. Yeah. Um, is this a panel? Is this? I cannot rip this. Well, panel then how come off you didn't wall. appreciate my my joke? <laughs> Because your joke is like actively trying to scare me. <laughs> me nah, specifically. It was a <laughs> I don't want like being scared. Oh wait, so does that mean that there's? Oh, wait, no, that's purple. Okay, that's purple. Um, it looked red from a distance. Okay, so there is an AI. There's an AI thingy under this panel. Well, that's rude. Uh, it's only seven thousand dollars. Fuck it. Oh, I can't cut that one open. Um, okay, hold up. We haven't decompressed this this ship yet. Let's uh let's chill out with the lasers for a second. We gotta be methodical here. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Let's do this one step at a time. We just gotta live with the AI for a moment. Okay. God, this game is a special kind of existential dread. Um, okay, so there's two over in that chamber. There's one hidden under a bulkhead over here. Actually, yeah, it's under that bulkhead. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, okay, so that's the last of the AI pieces. So we're gonna decompress the... Oh, they, they be fucking with me right now. How are they? Oh, that, no. that door was open uh, a moment ago. They closed it on me. Yep, yep. Don't like that. You okay, on? No, no, not especially. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so can we, yes, the air thing is working in here. So we're gonna close the airlock. We're gonna decompress this chamber. Well, hang on one sec. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the glass. There we go. So now this chamber can't be pressurized against my will. Now we get rid of the glass. Pressurize you against your, I mean, what? <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, the yeah, AI, you know the, what? The AI no, that's not, that's not a joke on... Did that count as destroying the AI? Because I just threw him into the furnace. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that works. Pretty much, right? Okay. Like, the furnace destroys anything. Right, right, right. Um, you, know, you know what they say, the furnace destroys, the towel forgets, the fucking... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Towels always remember. Please don't say that. No, I, I live my life hoping that the towel forgets. Wait, what is this? What is this? It's a helmet. Oh, nice. Cool. I've located a helmet with data on it. That somehow scares me more than just a regular, like, ass data drive. Okay, good. I'll have to check that out later, I guess. Anyways, back to my regular ass job. Ooh. Ain't afraid of no ghosts. 
Yeah, I met salvage goal one. So I'm guessing I get more money if I keep meeting my salvage goals, right? Uh, it's not money, no. Um, so although money is not really the like primary currency that for the game, it's just kind of like a background thing. Like, um, uh, well, anyways. Um, yeah, it, it, that's just kind of like a background thing because let's face it, you're not getting out of debt anytime soon. Um, but uh, it's my life. so the, the, it's the Lynx coins and the uh, ex basically experience points, the, the or whatever they're oh, called, okay. MP or something. I don't know. Um, so those are those are what you get for the salvage goals. Um, you only get them when you hit salvage goals. So you don't get them through normal uh, play. You have to get the salvage goals to get those. Oh, okay. So the Lynx tokens are used for upgrading your equipment, and of course the experience points uh, increase your certification. Which, uh, which unlocks more equipment on upgrades for you to get. And, um, of course, more difficult and interesting ships. Okay, I gotta crawl back inside this thing, because I'm really not hitting anything on the outside anymore. So I'm gonna get back inside. Actually, wait, there's some, still some salvage out here. There's still one more AI mod no, note on this frickin' ship, and... I would say I'd be having a really great time with this game if I wasn't constantly flying all over the place and having to apply brakes. Yeah, uh, gotta be liberal. Not liberal. Other way. Conservative. Democratic? With your uh, thrusters? I'll be democratic with my thrust. <laughs> I'll be I'll, I'll, I'll be um, <laughs> oligarchical with my, with my fucking... My break usage, yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, we need to decompress this uh, outer chamber now. So part of that's going to be doing it from the outside. What's the easiest way to do that from the outside? Trick shot. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could just cut a hole and do it. Um, Trick shot. Yeah. <laughs> I see you're having fun over there. Trick shot. Yeah, uh, I am. That's good. Oh, I can't cut a hole into this panel. Fuck. Okay, okay. No, this is fine. Um, because I have explosives. I think I can deploy one of those without hitting something vital. Um, wait, when I just put an explosive right on the uh, AI thingy that I can't hit with anything else. Yeah, let's just do that. Fuck it. This, this is not a mistake, right? No. It's right No, it's here. fine. I'm almost out of fuel. How do I refuel? Uh, Go to the store at, at the uh, hub. I have to buy fuel? Yeah, this is a dystopian corporate uh, future. Wow. You also have to buy oxygen if you're playing with oxygen. <laughs> oh, I disabled oxygen. <laughs> yeah, good idea. All right, so that's that exists. Now we detonate. If I run out of fuel, am I not going to be able to move anymore? Uh, you'll have to use your grapple gun to move, basically. But I don't have a grapple gun. Yes, you do. I do. Yeah, it's your oh, grabby you mean, thing. Oh, oh, this is okay. Well, here's what if something. That runs this is not power? a mistake. Uh, shaboom. Yeah, I gotta go get. Okay, fine, 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 fine. All right, well, that didn't can go I, horribly. I think I we just I lost an atmospheric with, regulator, unfortunately. But if I grab something with that, can I just reel myself in somehow? Is there like a reel myself in button? Yeah, uh, while you're grabbing something, hold left trigger. That'll pull you towards something or pull it towards you, depending oh, on the... Oh, that's so useful. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, don't go too fast, cause physics. Oh, that's a fair point. Ow! Oh, my body. See? What? What did I just say? Uh, I'm spinning wildly out of control. Fuck! Shit! Hit the brakes. Ah. Oh, good. Okay, that's fine. The hell? Look, you I'm have not brakes? the brightest. I'm not the brightest crayon in the knife box. Yeah? Yeah, I'm not. Okay. okay, hang on. How do I use this thing? 
Uh, I want... So I don't need oxygen, so fuck that. I could use a patch kit, I suppose. Uh, yeah. I need a heat oh. sink. I don't know where I get heat... Wait, heat sink. Found in data banks. Okay. Oh, there. Okay, I guess we're just going to take a heat sink out of that data bank for my own ship. The, the corporation won't mind that I'm uh, taking salvage for myself. Definitely not. I'm fully anticipating that once I get my, like, ship fully repaired, the corporation's gonna try and take it from me or something. Like, we yeah, own you, right so we own everything you own, or something stupid like that. Yeah, that sounds about right for a corporation, let's be honest yeah. with ourselves. Alright, this is the data bank, so I'm just gonna extract. Oh! Whoa! Oh! Right! <laughs> The power was still enabled. Okay, well, I died. Okay. Oh, you're dead. Good. Great. Oh, fuck. Uh, that was explosive, good, huh? Good to know. Don't. Well, see, the problem was is that it exploded, which then blew a hole in the pressurized uh, thingy, uh, which caused a whole bunch of other problems. Um, well, I didn't lose a... Um, a salvage level, so we're still in business. <laughs> Where is that hole? Ah, here it is. Good. Oh, a bunch of stuff has just just flew into space and is, has been lost. Good. Yep, thanks for telling me all the things I just lost. Appreciate it. Did I at least get the... I did at least get the heat sink. Okay, that's all that matters. Nice. That's death number five. Cool. biggest problem, uh, in my opinion, with uh, something exploding is that now I have to deal with all the pieces individually that would have been just one big piece that I could just move all, all at once. So that kind of sucks. Yeah. I mean, beyond just like losing a whole bunch of salvage, now I gotta be super careful with, with myself because uh, one more mistake like that and I lose a salvage goal. Which is not super great. Okay, what's still pressurized? Let's deal with that first before I carry on. Okay, it's actually super easy the way it's currently set up. Should be easy. Anyways, as long as the atmospheric regulator is not destroyed. Which, uh, you know, who knows about that. God, having, yeah, the AI just like closing the door on me. Spooky as shit. That is pretty great. I'll give you that. You know, maybe it's better to just go in and cut all the cut points first before I start actually doing the salvage. Because now, now I'm switching between doing more that or less. Yeah. Like, um. That that is an option. Yeah. There is no atmosphere it's... regulator in this room. Good. I I love that for myself. Fuck. Well, everything in here is unpowered. Why am I even trying to deal with the door? All right, all right. Well, I'm just gonna have to uh, do this the hard way. There should be a barge above us. They should put like a barge above, above us and below us. It's like oh, I, I get the feeling that that late game at some point there might be something that goes up there. I just just a hunch I have. That's where we put all our crimes against humanity. All right, well, I'm just gonna have to like remove the air the I, I'd say the old-fashioned way but I feel like this is not the old-fashioned way but anyway oh yes yeah, the old-fashioned way rapid depressurization yeah very old-fashioned yeah. how Apollo of you you mean airlock console people man. died for my joke that was rough oh god I did yeah I, I just realized yep 
Yeah, that, that's what you meant. Yeah. Ooh. Mm, maybe not. Maybe not that one. Yeah. You ever said a joke and you just instantly thought about it as like, man, you know, it's kind of fucked up in a greater context of things. Like, probably no, not def up definitely not. Either. Nope. Never had that experience. No. <laughs> um. Besides what I've told you, I mean. Have you ever just sat there and be like, the, the only the, the only thing that happens when you tell me is that it doesn't save me from an hour later realizing that I made a horrible mistake. Oh, <laughs> good. I'm glad I can be part of that for you. What is this? Looks like a glue gun? No, it's like a fucking... What is this? If something's marked for the furnace, can I just cut it till it's gone? No. Okay. That does not do the same thing. The big thing is, is if it's if it goes in the furnace, they can use the materials that oh, it makes. You know? Yeah, that's fair. I didn't. I, I, I haven't been getting much credits for anything that goes in the furnace, so. No, because furnace, was... furnace stuff is largely not very expensive, like uh, valuable. So like you you can typically like leave that till the end, but uh, yeah, furnace uh, furnace stuff tends to not be worth very much. Okay, now that the fuses are gone, that can come out, but that's going to be a whole process. So we're just going to leave that for now. Because I've just realized that that's uh, going to be a pain in the ass. Okay. Oh, right, that's not the exit. Uh, this is the exit. Okay, so if we want to get the electrical system out, we're going to need to... Wait, what? This is different. I got to love it to the point where I just I finish cutting a lot of the stuff and I start seeing things float away from me. Like, mm, that's a good feeling. I like that feeling. Yeah, we're, we're just like gaps start appearing between the panels. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's so nice. Yeah, I like that shit. Um, oh, okay. I can I can cut this away. Uh, actually, let's just deal with the fuel system next. Uh, wait, no. There's still stuff attached to the back. Let's let's just work from the back to the front. I still have all of that to move. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's work back to the front then for now, because uh, most of the electrical stuff is kind of taken care of for now. One of the things you kind of just got to get used to with this game is uh, the, the, uh, the understanding that up and down really are more suggestions. And uh, you, you got to like not worry about which direction your head is facing. Oh, no. My head is facing every direction. <laughs> I said don't worry about it. <laughs> I suppose that's more of a trans girl pre-surgery thing. Oh gosh. Wow. I really went there. God damn it. <laughs> Where is my humor coming from today? Am I just done? It's just early morning you... humor. Don't worry about it. That reminds me. I gotta go do laundry soon. Thank, <clears throat> th thank you for the classic drum. Uh, what is that called? Drum sting? Whatever. Uh, the ba Yeah. Yeah. There's a name for that. I'm sure there's a name for that. Oh God! Look at all of that debris. <laughs> ah, it's not worth it. It's, not it's worth gross. It, it's not worth it. No, I have to take care of it. No, you don't. Fuck it. Who gives a shit? Look at all of that. It's so gross. Yeah, I, I'm actually dealing with a lot of that right now, so I feel that. This is why you don't let things blow up, okay? Lesson learned. The uh, the electrical stuff blows up if you try to uh, extract parts from it while it's still powered. Um, by the way, you don't have to be super accurate with the like, uh, with with the furnace or the processor. Just as long as it gets past that yellow line uh, around the entrance, uh, it'll it'll get dragged in. There's like a gravity. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. I w I've been trying to angle that shit for a little bit because honestly, it's been driving me nuts. Yeah, you tend to not have to worry about it too much. Oh god, it's so satisfying. Like, 
like I've been trying to get up some of the because one of my shift parts exploded too. And I've been trying to deal with that a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's so satisfying to take apart the whole thing and throw the whole thing in there. Oh yeah, like the whole panels. It's actually kind of nice. I can see why you like this game. Uh, when you get tethers, it like like what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna take this whole big ass chunk and just slide it all into the processor without disassembling it. Nice. Ooh, it, salvage goal two reached. It's gonna be just like a big chunk all of uh, of salvage all at once. Like here we go. Just like toss a few tethers on it. Are there still cut uh, points on this thing? Really? On the ship? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I missed a crate. Fuck. <clears throat> I guess I have to process a lot of smaller things before I start ripping off the big things. Yeah, you, you, you kind of have to have a complete picture before you start cutting into things, typically. If, if you want them to aim for, like, relative perfectionism. Rimshot. So yes, glad. that's that's the word. Thank you, Yodi. Yodi always coming in clutch. We should make Yodi a mod at this point. I Gosh. like him. Gosh, way to just vocalize that in in, in an environment where if I say no, I'm the asshole. Well, you can say no and not be the asshole. You can just tell, uh, just give me a good but, reason. <laughs> on, honestly, we're not big enough yet to be thinking about uh, mods, considering we both kind of are capable of uh, managing that. If, if I was a solo streamer, I'd love to have a, a mod around, but uh, not really in the books right now. But um, we'll certainly consider uh, one uh, if, if we ever have like a chat of more than like 10 people tends to not be necessary below that it's more of a um, it just feels on like more of a uh, ceremonial title at that uh, size you know yeah fair only reason Monsu is 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 a mod is because uh, like I, I that she was the first one I modded uh, on the channel and uh, just kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. <sighs> this is gross. Oh, it's getting pulled in. Oh, look at nice. it. There it goes. I can just I can turn off the tethers. Here we go. Check it out. I'm, I'm about to watch like two of your goals get met instantly. Maybe not. No, it'll be one at at most. I'm, it might not even be there because I'm I'm only like a fraction of the way to the next goal. This is not worth very much in the grand scheme. Uh oh. I don't think. Let's see. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's like Aww. it was nothing. There's 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 a few, the, all the like interior parts, those are the stuff that's worth the most and that it hurts so much to have like everything explode in there. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, it sucks. <clears throat> I think once I reach salvage goal three, I think I'm going to go to your new ship. Fuck it. Really? Yeah. Ooh. My ship's already kind of destroyed. Like, I I messed it up kind of badly with that explosion. Yeah. And I don't want to try to nitpick my way to to, to salvage goal four. Oh, uh, so salvage goal four is your last one? Salvage goal five was my last one, but I... Uh, oh, I lost not, it. That's not possible, yeah. Damn. So I just... I'm I'm willing to accept the fact that I fucked that up, and I'll just take my salvage goal three instead and go to a new ship where I can get a salvage goal five. I'd I'd say if you had tethers, once you just like, what once you're about to say just fuck oh, it. Oh, salvage goal four lost. Fuck yeah, there's that. Up. All right. Well, uh, I guess it's not worth it anymore to uh, even bother. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if you want to end your shift, go back to your like, to the door. Um, and then you can you can start start a new shift when and swap out your. Uh, your ship. I'm going to I'm going to try to do salvage goal 3 before I leave. I think I can still oh, yeah. get that. The crates I, I I didn't realize the crates are super valuable. Uh yeah, they are. They're so small, but they're much more expensive than these fucking things, I suppose. Yep, exactly. We live in a this is a strange universe that we're operating in. That these giant pieces of hulking metal and aluminum frame nanocarbon frame 
are less expensive than whatever the fuck is inside of those. Uh... To be fair, that's kind of the um, like world that you'd have to. That, that, that's that's that is the universe that you'd have to live in in order to uh, in order to have these sorts of things exist. You know. You no, know, that's fair. That's that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. Um, like having the ability to like cheaply and well, relatively cheaply, uh, create ships, kind of is is a necessity if you're gonna have a extremely space-faring uh, civilization. How the hell's the cut point for this one? Oh shit, there might have been a, um... Nope, alright, we're good. I always forget to, like, pull the airlock controls off of a panel before I toss it into the processor, and that cost me a little bit of money. Yeah, that's fair. Um, give me... Kit! Open! Damn you! <laughs> okay, here's some cut points. Fuck yeah. I think this thing's a... I think this thing's one of the bigger cells anyway. So, if I get this, I should be able to get part, uh, salvage all three anyway. Nice. Okay, let's go inside this cockpit and take it apart. Honestly, the, I, I consider these games to be, like, super ADHD friendly because as once you realize that, like, anything you do... As long as it's like working towards the conclusion, like you realize that you don't have to like stick to one thing. You don't have to be methodical. You can just like follow your ADHD heart and uh, just do do whatever you please. Whatever whatever gives you the good feels, you know. Yeah. Until the job is done. That's kind of how I manage things in real life. Uh, instead of like trying to be methodical about stuff, um, when I when I have like a, a really like when I get when I get chores done, it's like, all right, I'm uh, I it, it kind of like nests itself. So like um, I I start like doing the dishes, um, and then midway through I realize that like I don't have I don't have any counter space left. Uh, for all the like drying dishes, so I'm like, all right, well, uh, let's go do something else while I'm waiting for that to get done. Uh, go and like clean the bathroom, and then while I'm cleaning the bathroom, I have to empty out the like uh, the garbage and just do like it's it just kind of like steamrolls, uh, snowballs. Yeah, I get yeah. you. And I didn't plan That's to do any um... of those things, but n once I noticed that they need to be done, I just kind of do them, you know. Well, there's lots of people who get executive dysfunction because they can't they can't manage dual decks. Because there's actually these really good books that I find help are really are really good for people with ADHD who suffer from executive dysfunction. Yeah. Who deal with snowball steamroll things that they just can't handle, and it's like um, it's the art it's the art of cleaning by Marie someone. She's a Japanese woman who yep. who comes to I've America a lot. One. She's she's really really good at what she does, and her book is actually very helpful. I, I highly recommend it to people who suffer from ADHD who have trouble organizing their lives in a way. Um. Of course, one of the biggest things I've learned about ADHD is that it is not the same for everybody. So um, yeah, what works for me will not always work for you. So just. Uh, Honestly, uh, my experience has been just don't listen to any, but what anybody else says and just spend, uh, spend your time and energy figuring out what works for you. Yeah. And right? remember, if you need help with your ADHD and managing your ADHD, there are resources available to help you. And there, there are resources that are available for free. You can, if you use 211 in the U.S., you can be able to get contact with people like operators who be able to give you resources that are available in your area that a lot of times are completely free or available for people with in low income. So be sure to check those out. Wow, I didn't know about that. Well, now you do. And now these people do as well. Or you're, or if you're in Canada, just like, I don't know, talk to your doctor. If you have a doctor in Canada. Why wouldn't you? I don't know. 
I mean, I, I guess I guess if you're in an area where there's like not very many doctors, and so none of them are actually accepting patients, then you kind of just have to like live that um, that clinic, that walk-in clinic life. But uh, I mean, most people uh, uh, that are like settled into a city or whatever uh, that I know of have a have a doctor. I see. Okay, so I got some I got some things. I got my basic training, so. It gives me my stinger, split saw, grapple, scanner, yeah, whatever. I got basic certification, which means I get my mackerel station hopper and my mackerel light cargo and mackerel heavy cargo. Okay. So I don't know what that means, but uh, uh, I'm glad it, I got it's, it. It's just a new ship that you have uh, available to, to, to do salvage stuff with. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, honestly, honestly, reading into those is not super critical. The, the It's just kind of like... Yeah, there's there's a new ship that's now uh, available f f in your catalog uh, and, and that you can pick from it, when it shows okay. up. Not it won't always show up, but sometimes it will. How do I get rid of a ship that's in my current ships, or is that something that will just so go away? So the, uh, the list of ships uh, that you can salvage, those are not uh, those are not s fixed. Uh, they randomize every time you look at them. Um, ah. So, well, not every time you look at them, but every time they load. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, just when you pick a new ship, the old ship will, will disappear from your bag or whatever's left of it. Okay. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to do an, I'm going to do a new ship. Let's see. The Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's where my brain went to. I'm having a really good brain connection time with people lately. Like, uh, I w that made no sense. Good fucking job, brain. You're um, welcome. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what I'm trying to say is that, um, have you ever, have you ever done the thing where you and another person will be thinking of basically the same thing at the same time and will be say will start saying it at the same time? No, never. Okay. I mean, you and I have had that experience, but I, I respect your answer, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think so. Never really uh, noticed it, so it probably doesn't happen in any sort of, like, significant capacity. My brain works very differently than most people's, though. I feel so. like our brains work a little similarly. It's just yeah, that that's we get why we mesh so well. Brain. Yeah. We just... I'm I'm from the art uh, the uh, universe where uh, Razor fucking pursued an art degree <laughs> and philosophy. Uh, I feel like there's a lot more about uh, different about our lives than just that, but uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. We 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 just uh, have grown up with a lot of very similar things in our life, which is something I haven't been able to say about most people I've met before. That's all. Fair, fair. You, every time I like say, hey, have you heard about this? You're like, yeah. And I'm like, you're like, that's my favorite show. And I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I bet if I started listing stuff off to you that you'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> well, that sometimes happens too. Are you like? Are you into the Thundercats? No, be like, that's like way before my time. There's been multiple Thundercats reruns. First off, second off, fuck you. What do you mean? Like <laughs> For proving I, my point. Has there actually been re like remakes of the Thundercats? Because yeah, that feels like a very old show. That's like I've never heard of ever having like a, a significantly popular reboot. Yeah, I mean, they're not always super successful. It just depends on what you're what you're getting into. Oh, good. I sh I I love watching a show that gets canceled halfway through the first season. <laughs> it doesn't. No, that's not what happens. <laughs> By the way, um, this is I I guess I guess I'm fucking repping the the He Man and the the Thundercats today. Oh, good. Um, but Masters of the Universe and She-Ra, Princess of Power, great shows. You should watch them. All right. In fact, I highly recommend She-Ra, The Princess of Power. Those are, that's a very good show. In fact, I consider you lesser of a person if you don't watch yeah. them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fucking get on it. God, you have time, apparently. <laughs> how, how can you call yourself, you know, a real person if you haven't watched these? 
Okay, so now I have to do the incredibly uh, difficult task of getting this massive explosive fuel tank out of here. Um, fuck, how am I gonna do this? Because the cut points are really, really close to uh, to the fuel tank, and I'd rather they not cause it to explode. Um, I could just like sacrifice some of the frame around it in to to get it out, um, which might be the option that I go for. Will it fit through the square hole? No, it will not. Okay. Well, I had a bunch of Lynx coins, but I didn't end up using them for anything. How do I spend my Lynx coins? When you're when you're in your hab, you got to go to your equipment workbench, and you can upgrade your equipment there. Oh, with the Lynx okay. coins. That's what they're for. Oh, okay, I got you, got you. Yeah. So was, you you won't have very many upgrade options available yet, but it it's actually worked out to be pretty um like linear that you're you're never gonna have more Lynx coins than you than you have a, than you're able to spend. So it's. Like, this game is very well balanced and made. I cannot stress that enough. Um, fuck, how am I going to... You know what, let's just disassemble the parts of this that are not going to explode. And then we're going to worry about it. That way, if it does explode, less things get blown. Okay, my thrusters are damaged now, apparently. Oh yeah, my, my thrusters also just made that warning sign, so good to know. Yeah. Not a huge deal, though. That, that, that's just like 75% is, is where that uh, warning shows up. I did. Well, no, that would have immediately set on fire if, if I hadn't flushed those already. So I definitely flushed them. Okay. I'm at an hour and 15 minutes into this deconstruction. Good. Nice. Nice. Good, good, good. That's, uh, this is taking a bit. And this can go on the barge. Worth 200,000 right there. It's a little nibble. Oh, right. The AI or the whatever. Hang on. Let's turn back on the speech volume. Now that we don't have to deal with uh, cinematic bullshit. Oh, okay, you get to hear them scream. Good. Well, no, no. I'm the, just the, the, um, whatever. The, the, the lady that, uh, that tells you that the salvage was deposited. Oh, just, gotcha. just so that we can hear her every time I throw something into a into a, a bin. She's very important for the uh, for the neuron firing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or or for that uh, horrible dread when she tells you that you put something in the wrong place. Uh. <laughs> True. That is that is completely fair. Uh. uh. Oh, I didn't even read uh, Yodi's last two messages. Sorry, Yodi. Um, meanwhile, I'm in a Discord call with a 3D modeler for an Arma mod and encouraged her to give in to her impulsive thoughts and replace Magpul with Tailpul. <laughs> Excellent. Oh You're doing God's work, Yodi. <sighs> uh, what's worth more, one ton of scrap steel or a box full of high-quality computer parts? I mean, yeah, when... when Mining asteroids and like desolate planets becomes a an available option. All of those like really common resources just become basically worthless. I'm super hyped for getting a planet cracker in humanity's future. What I'm, is that I'm, game? What? No, what is that? I I haven't heard about human planet cracker. No, the 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 game. No, I'm talking about life. Bitch. It's like, oh. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about like, I'm super hyped for when we eventually get Planet Crackers. Oh, well, I mean, that's going to be a while. <laughs> what game is that? It's a biscuit. I th you, it sounded like you were talking about a video game. No, I was talking about life. Oh, okay. As you do. Just like, man, I am so excited for Death Stars. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking that if we do want we do need planet crackers if we do want this kind of future though we need to be able to harvest entire planets yeah and the the, the difficulty though with that is that planets have gravity so um that kind of sucks 
Yeah. Kind of have to solve that problem first. Solving planets having gravity? I'm scared to, because then our planet might not have gravity someday. <laughs> I don't want to grow up gravityless. Oh, God. It, did, so, I, I've been reading about space stuff lately ever since I got back into KSP. Just kind of, uh, just kind of happens. It shows up in my in my feed now, um, and uh, not that I use like Twitter feed or anything, just YouTube more more likely. Um, and uh, apparently now the the biggest barrier uh, to like interplanetary travel right now is gravity, because yeah. the human body is designed to operate within gravity. And given enough time without gravity, things go horribly wrong. Yeah, that's why a lot of times people suggest like different ways to make artificial gravity, like centri uh, centripetal yeah. force, like that's, around that, a ring. That's the that's the most like prevalent, like e easiest thing to do right now is just like make a ring and spin that shit uh, while in motion, which yeah, uh, exactly sounds effective. It's somewhat effective, depending. But it, the thing is, is that with living space and stuff, and being able to mon, it's it's not a well, it, it's it's the, exponential the, how big you have to make the ring to fit more things on it. Well, that and the, uh, you need to make the ring a certain uh, d circumference diameter. Same thing. Um, and to uh, they are not the same thing. No, I, yes, but yes, but I I'm saying that they in, imply the same the same concept in this case wider in both cases um but uh you have to make the ring bigger in order to uh in, in order for say you stand up your head will experience different gravity than your feet mm. so the you have to make it bigger in order to minimize that effect okay i'm just gonna go for the cut uh fuck no there's gotta be an easier way um God damn it, how do I do this? See, the last time I did one of these ships, it blew up on me, and I still don't know exactly why. Um, fuck it, we're going for it. Oh no. Okay, we're good. That's one. Oh, you're good. And next one. Uh, okay. The biggest thing I think is, is that you need to make sure, just like with guns, you need to know where your laser's gonna go if you miss. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, okay, now I have to blow up these things. The problem is, is these I can't cut with the, the laser, so I have to use the demo charges. And um, they have a bit of splash. So I don't remember where my upgrade is currently with them, but i um, going to place them as far towards the outside as possible and hope to God that this doesn't cause a major problem. Splash. Ah. Am I out of, oh, I'm out of charges. Let me go get more charges before I, uh, before I continue. Might as well blow up all four of the, of the struts at once rather than, uh, one at a time, you know. If it's gonna blow up, I'm, it might as well blow up with style. Uh, okay, demo charges. Oh yeah, um, I'm curious. I'm actually curious about something uh, that I'd like to ask other people while we're here, um, regarding a game we were discussing last night, and not not the not the one we decided not to discuss, not that one, but the other one. What? Um, All right. Uh, fucking fuck! I can't remember what's called. Uh, uh, lethal, lethal, lethal company. I, I was gonna say Suicide Squad, but no, that's a different thing. Lethal company. Yeah, lethal company. <laughs> Um, we I was we, we were thinking about trying out some new things for the stream, and um, I know Yodi's here. Yodi, you're one of our most avid watchers, and if anyone else is here, I'd like to hear your opinions as well. Um, do you would you guys like to see some Lethal Company content? Because I'm thinking it might be kind of fun to do, honestly. But no, no, no opinions from anybody less than a tier three sub. Sorry, we don't. <laughs> have any tier three subs you don't understand well i guess nobody gets to have enough yeah sorry 
Remember, you are allowed to have an opinion. I don't care. What yes, yes. Uh, play, playing with viewers, perhaps? Uh, that's a possibility. The the down, the problem we've... Uh, I mean, the problem with that, that, that kind of has stopped us in the past, is that... Um, I mean, we'd love to play a game with you, Yodi, but I, I, most games that you play with viewers, you tend to need more than like one uh, one viewer. I want to play. I want to play friends versus friends eventually with with Yodi on stream. That'd be kind of fun. Okay, I'm gonna back the fuck up, and we're gonna see if this blows up. So give me a sec. Did you Let's, plan to charge? Yep. There's four charges on the four stru st 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 structure beams that I need to, to get rid of. So here we go. To answer your Boom. question, yes, it is going to blow up. Heck yeah! Nice! Ooh, that was very, very nice. Okay, so I'm in a fuel room. I mean, you can do lethal with three, yeah, but uh, uh, see, that's the thing. Um, and n nothing against you, Yodi, because like, I, I don't think this is a comment against you, but we kind of do have to set like a rule for the entire chat when, uh, when we're d discussing these sorts of things. And uh, what I mean by that is Lethal Company in particular gives like a voice to chat members and that's kind of like really cool in some ways but it also means that like there's a lot of opportunity for abuse there um we'll, I, I've we'll, I've we'll say, yeah what we'll say right now is that we're, we'll definitely figure it out and if yeah. we do decide to do a community-based event we do have you in mind. I think that'd be really yep, fun exactly. to have you because you're a really cool person. Um, I probably probably next time you and I hang out sometime because I know I know it's been a while because we played a game of friends versus friends like way long ago. I think it'd be cool to do that again. So maybe once we have some time, or I'll catch one of your streams because I know you do streaming as well, and I, that way um, I can convince Razor and also make sure that to assuage the fears. And because it'd be really cool to have you, you're a really cool part of our community. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'd love to be able to just check you out, check out your stream. L shoot me a DM next time you stream, please. I would love to watch you. And I always, I always just ignore our Discord channel because <laughs> I'm usually that. working. That's what I, we have no, that I'm, for. You shouldn't be ignoring not, our, our our community. What the hell? I'm not ignore. Okay, I yeah, I'm ignoring them, but I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, I check it out when I'm working and stuff. So I can't, I can't because I, I work a ten-hour job. I can't, I can't just. I can't just jump in. I gotta be Penelope some most of my day and cartographer Penelope some of my day. <laughs> That's just how it is right now. If we ever get if we ever get to the point where I can quit my job and be a successful stream streamer all the time, yeah. then yes, I will be cartographer Penelope like most of the day. Right, yeah, so. Yodi streams are exclusively Arma. That, that's part of the reason why I, I just haven't uh, joined them is because... I fucking love Arma. Arma's not really in my in my wheelhouse, personally. I I love Daisy and Arma um, because I love that scene a lot because I'm really into super... I'm into games where a bunch of people can come together and make like a really interesting and fun, unique experience. Mm -hmm. That's like, especially military sims. I'm well, a big nerd for those. So, so my experience with those is that it's like, um, it's kind of like those like role play, uh, like GTA yeah. servers and stuff. It, and, and, um, in fact, I, I, I actually, I, I don't. This might be a blast in the past, but I, I was approved for the Arma Life community. Oh wow! Yeah, that is a blast from the past. Yeah, um, which. Um, was like a whole approval process, and ultimately, I was I, I got in the game, and I was like, "What the fuck do I do?" Um, but the um, yeah, it it, it kind of relies on everybody being on the same page when it comes to like what you're doing and, and what you're role playing or whatever. Um, yeah, which I've never really had anybody to like any significant number of people that, that are willing to do that sort of thing, you know. So that's kind of why I've never really been into it. Well, the, the cool thing about Arma most of the time is that it if you get into like a decent server where it's not RP focused, it's it's actually kind of fun. Like uh, I remember Grimbeard had a server for a long time that was very fun. Um, I really should play again, honestly. I'm kind of missing it. Well, um, yeah, yeah, but that, that's part of the problem that I see with those sorts of things is it's like uh, there's always that if statement of like, yeah, if, if you if you get a good group, it's like, yeah, well. That's the problem that I have. 
Well, like, you just got to put the effort in. Like, you know, it takes a while to find a, to find a group you click with. Right, but I, I could I could put that effort in, or I could just play another game. Yeah, but you but that's the thing is like you can't get you can't get that experience in a lot of games like being a part of like a really fun community. Well, that's why it's I play like D&D. Well, yeah, I put but... in that effort for D and D, and so now I have that experience, and now I don't. Yeah, like that's the thing, you know. I don't know it it it's one of those things where like you don't really know what you're missing until you experience it, but. I tried like, experiencing like, it and failed miserably a couple times, so it doesn't really seem to. Hey. Real, measure. real quick. Go ahead. Um, I've got like two panels stuck to each other. One's like a huge aluminum panel that's supposed to go to the furnace. One's a titanium panel it's supposed to go to the processor, and there's like no cut point. Okay. What do I do with these? Uh, well, um, if you also like, it's got a nanocarbon tube on it. If you stop all your momentum, uh, what you can. Uh -huh. Uh, and hover over it, you, you should be able to see, like, some parts of it that are, uh, like, you, you should be able to see the boundaries of, of individual parts. Um, uh -huh. Some of those, it, like, the edges of the panels are, like, really thin beams that you can, um, that you can just, like, disintegrate uh, with minimal cost. Um, like, here, I, I should be able to show you on mine in a second. Let me just... Get these charges planted. One at this. this three. And then there's one over here. Nope. Nope. I was going around the circle. It's over here. There we go. Okay. I'm going to try to do a line cut. I think that'll be Honestly, I don't use line cuts unless it's very necessary. Just because they usually aren't okay so uh let me show you on on one of uh my rooms uh because that's that I, I assume you're referring to like a room situation so uh don't mind the debris uh okay so let's say like this room right here right like there's most of these are furnace actually they're all furnace um but uh same concept um just look at the look at the corners so this piece right here uh, this one, this piece right here, can be uh -huh. disintegrated without disintegrating the panels. So the corner. Oh, okay. Or or the edge between them if if they're both like flat. Okay, my cutter was not able to cut through that, so I just cut off the aluminum outside. Really? Yeah. Weird. I guess I was probably been smarter for me to melt. Some something else on that, but honestly, I wasn't quite sure how much. The or, cost or was. you can you, you can typically just like ignore that sort of thing because if, if you look at the costs or the value of of the things at, at, when you hover over them, you can kind of just like say fuck it and just throw it in whichever one is more valuable, and just like oh true, don't worry um, about the, the the part that's going in the wrong place, you know? Yeah, I get. It. Yeah. All right, fire in the hole. Okay, I'm in. Uh, Cause I'm in the engine compartment. I gotta find that fuel flush. Oh, that worked out. Okay, hang on. This is the thruster cap. How do I dislodge this thruster cap? Let me take a look at the backside. Hang on. Uh, thruster. Don't tell me. No, don't tell me. I want to see if I can figure this one out real quick. Hang on. Thruster cap. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at it. Okay, there's a cut point. I see. So there's a little cut point. I have to cut off of it. Yeah. Okay, that's one. Yeah. And then there's two, mm -hmm. and it's away. Cool. Mm -hmm. Why is everything exploding? Oh. <laughs> uh, you were not careful with your cut. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I mean, I funny. I would have expected it to happen. Um, uh, under under the thruster cap, there's the, uh, you're probably gonna find the actual thruster now, right? No, it was just a thruster cap. Oh. Well, what was it? Capping? Um. Nothing really. It's kind of a. I think the engine's just completely gone out of this thing. It's just a big open box. Wait, that means I don't have a fuel flush. Which means, yeah, because if there's no fuel system, then there's no fuel flush. Like, like, um. Oh wait, but there's you, a big. You, fuel you don't. You don't right have here. system scanning yet, right? Well, I mean, I've got a structural scan. Yeah, but you don't have system scanning, so you wouldn't be able to, to just like see where all the fuel systems are. Like on my screen, and with system scanning, I can scan where the fuel is. 
It's not a, it's not uh, an issue for you because you, you don't have much in the way of that to worry about. I'm gonna I'm just gonna have to cut this whole fucking fuel system out wholesale without worrying, so I don't have to worry about it exploding on me. Um. Yeah, probably. That's frustrating. Um. Or there is a like, like here, 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 here. See that this this is what I'm talking about right here. Okay, like one, okay, yeah. one of these little switches here. Oh, I did not have. There's not one of those in there. Well, it's not always on that part. Um, it depends on the fuel system you're working with. Like, I haven't seen the ship that you're working on probably in a long time because uh, it's it's one of the simpler ships that I just don't get anymore. Um, actually, I mean. Yeah, no, I guess we can't do a screen share right now. Yeah, we're streaming. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'll figure this out. Okay. Um, either either I will figure it out and I'll learn from this experience, or I'll die in a ball of fire. And then respawn, and then still have a ship that you have to now salvage. Yeah, that's fair. from from a bunch of tiny itty bitty pieces. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm just gonna look over this fuel system really quickly. I mean, if there's a switch, it's gonna be on it. Yep. Let me see. Yeah, there's no switch. I'm gonna take apart the back panel off of it just to double check. Weird. Yeah, let's see what this back panel looks like. Uh, I feel like I'm an actor. I feel like I'm being an electrician or something. Yeah, let's pop this back panel off real quick. The switch will usually be near with the main like fuel tank. Well, it looks like it's a central fuel tank with a couple of different pipelines off of it, but there's no other auxiliary fuel tanks. So then that's the only that's that's the only place that the switch would likely be is on that central fuel tank. Yeah, it's not there. So I'm assuming it's. I think I'm assuming it's going to be safe to cut. I mean, it I'm won't too. be. It won't be. Uh, probably not. I mean. Oh, then, then I've just got to cut this thing out. I, I I guess it depends on like whether or not the game is giving you fuel lines that are full of fuel yet. I mean, last time it did, so maybe. Oh well, then yeah. Who knows? Let me, let me hang on. Let me get into the compartment behind this thing, so that way I can take a look to see if there's anything else up there. Because for all I know, there might be an another fuel tank in between the panels. That's where your scanner could sometimes help you. Well, it says there's a compartment up there, but I don't see a fuel. It doesn't say fuel specifically. Right. Let's pop off these panels. There is nothing to take apart over here. How do I get in there? I'm gonna pop this off. <clears throat> I mean, there's like this big central structure. And my fuel system is taken care of. Nice. Right. Okay. Now we Good continue job, to make our way forward. Next step is getting to the electrical system all of that is yeah i've already depressurized everything and you're so smart and, and, and like understanding of complex systems and it's really it's really nice to hear you go and talk about it and with with such good authority thanks you're uh, you're good at complimenting <laughs> wow <laughs> Uh, and yeah, you're you're a supportive, emotionally stable, emotionally, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not stable, definitely not stable. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, the uh, the the the, what's the word? Uh, conscious, sort of. I guess that's kind of a, one of the words I, I would use. Emotionally conscious. Yes, my ass. <laughs> hey, I'm a very emotionally dead person. Okay. Uh huh. It's a compliment to like know your emotions or whatever. Uh huh. I don't know. I'm bad at compliments, guys. We've been you over this. You weren't bad at compliments. You weren't bad at compliments. You were bad. You like, 
emotionally stable. Oh no, not def definitely not that one. <laughs> like, okay, I see where that. I see where we're standing right now. <laughs> I I don't know many emotionally stable people. I feel like that's that's like perfectionism. It, it it's not achievable. It's it's uh -huh. just something you strive for. Jesus fuck. <laughs> You're not even going back on it. You're just like. Just I mean, like, I'm, I'm not trying to say that I'm emotionally stable. Fuck. <laughs> oh my god, you're just... Yeah, you're really getting deeper in the hole. Hey, Chad, anybody emotionally stable around here? <laughs> <laughs> if you're emotionally stable, tag yourself in the chat. Jesus Christ, Razor. <laughs> Oh, no. I was trying to be cute and fun and compliment you. I don't know like, how to respond to cute and fun. God damn it. It's like, well, time to start digging through the compliments that I know Penelope's not. <laughs> Quick, tell me how I'm supposed to respond to, to when you're being cute and shit. I don't know. Yeah, well, well, then or... how am I supposed to know? <laughs> <laughs> And thus the problem is revealed. No, it, the, this is not the problem. <laughs> Wait, does this whole thing need to go to the furnace? Oh fuck, I have to take everything out of here first, don't I? Yeah, typically the inner structure is, is all furnace. Oh, Though okay. there, there might yeah. occasionally be like one panel that's like an air filter that goes to the processor, in which case you gotta like cut that shit out. But yeah, usually it's just like the whole, the whole interior goes to the furnace, the whole exterior goes to the processor and all of the like loose bits, those go to the uh, the the barge. That's that's the rule, and it seems to have worked out pretty well for me. Cool, yeah. Okay, hang on. Torn apart. Away you go. And then you go down here. Okay, I've got a complaint. The lights should go to the processor, not the barge. Uh, we've received your complaint. Um, th uh -huh. Thank you. Um, we uh, will be sure uh, to get back to you uh, within three to five business days. Um, oh, good. good. Your business is um, uh, appreciated. Oh, wow. Um, I'm an employee, but okay. <laughs> Man, it almost feels like man, you're, you're, HR... you're an employee that owns owes the company billion uh, a billion dollars. So uh, your business is appreciated. <laughs> man, I almost feel like a real customer. <laughs> oh, okay, that's not coming out. Uh, is it still stuck down? Oh, it's still stuck down. Okay. And nice salvageable too. Nothing's blown up yet, so I'm happy. Hooray! That was a very Leosin, yay. Hooray. Fuck, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, I was like, hooray! Like, for, for, for context, as a character in, in the D&D game I, I run. I don't know, some days you are Leos, and some days, some days I get Chris. See, that's that's the secret. Every character is secretly me. <laughs> God damn it. It's gotta I, be character. I, 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 never I also, women. I, I just need to call myself out. I was about to like try and make a joke that would have absolutely been a major spoiler. What is it? <laughs> no. No, I'm not revealing stuff about my characters. No. Come on, it's okay. <laughs> you can you can trust me. Uh we both know that you would not appreciate me spoiling shit. I don't give a fuck. Uh-huh. See, that's that's what everybody says until they've been spoiled. There is there is nothing you can spoil me with that would make your your game is excellent. I love your I'm, game. I mean, yes, you might still enjoy the game with that knowledge. However, it's it's that like you will have a better time if you didn't uh, have that spoiled. You know, like that that's 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 the whole spoiler argument. Like, yes, 
There is something lost, even if the overall whole is still positive. Wow, I've been living on like low fuel for a while. Oh shit, shit, shit. Fuck. I went way too hard with my I just cracked my helmet. Well, you you still have time to go and get more uh that fixed. If it's yeah, not I'm a bad gonna... crack. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'm gonna go get a fix right now. Soup patch, please. There we go, that's better. Need some thruster fuel. Man, apparently glass is fucking expensive. Jesus. Why? I just I, I didn't realize it, but I threw a glass into something that it shouldn't have gone into, and I lost a bunch of my. Like, I'm barely gonna meet progress goal, uh, salvage goal five now. Oof. Like, I don't know what I threw in, like how much glass that was, but I don't know it was that expensive. <laughs> the company doesn't want, want you to know this, but you don't need fuel. Yeah, that's a spoiler. See. You know, <laughs> your experience is better not knowing that. Uh, <laughs> <God damn it. laughs> All right. Oh, there is an auxiliary fuel tank. I can see it and I can see a little switch on it. Oh, nice. Um, let me see here. So let me get in there. Get all up in that fuel tank. No, that wasn't a that wasn't a switch. Damn. That was just another pipe junction. Great. Damn. I love that. Love that for me right now. Yeah. Yeah, I love that for me right now. Uh, okay. I need to cut apart this section of the ship so I can get the power generator thingy out of here. Oh, that explosion almost hit one of my radiation containment units. That I did not realize. Woo, I dodged a bullet. A very, very radioactive bullet. We should um we should play Dokapon Kingdom someday on stream. I don't know what that is. Um the GG have played it, so you should you should check it out. Okay. It's a very good game. Very fun. Oh yeah, your fuel levels are critical. What are you doing? Fine, I'll go get some fucking fuel, goddamn. Razor, don't you know your fuel levels are critical right now? I hate to be critical of your fuel levels, but your your, your fuel levels are pretty low. Hey, what's up, guys? It's critical. Ah, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, god damn it! Um, how am I gonna get in there? Because there's like there's some fuel and uh, coolant tanks in there that uh, that are <clears throat> gonna get in the way if I try to just pull this whole thing off like a like a big old cap. So um. Shit. Alright, I guess I'll take the front part off, then I'll take the fuel tanks out, then I'll take the rear part off. Okay. I've noticed that a few of these ships are held together by a single cut point. And that's terrifying. <laughs> that is, uh, that is corporate stuff right there. Yep. Yeah, it is. Um, okay. Now, what I can do... Oh no. Uh god damn it. Ah uh, no, I there's there's a substructure I have to deal with as well. The outer structure is not going to come apart into more than one piece, is it? Right? Like there's no uh there's no connector that lets me cut break it into two pieces. No, no there isn't. Shit. Okay. Okay, um, what am I doing here? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Ask myself that question every day. Mm, let's see. I could just like start cutting. I mean, at this stage in, in the game, cutting bits and pieces is not going to be super detrimental. Yeah, I'm just going to take off this whole fucking thing. I'm just going to take off this whole side panel. And if there's nothing in there, then I'm just going to cut out the entire fuel system wholesale and just throw that in wherever in the barge. Wow. Because like, there's nothing else I can do at this point. Because it's like, if there is not a switch on this fuel system, there is no way I'm getting this fuel system out without an explosion. 
right. if there's any fuel left in those pipes. So I just need to just accept the fact that some things are not in my control and hope for the fucking Whoop. best, I suppose. That piece just came out. There it goes. I, I appreciate that this game presents like a unique puzzle every time. Where it's mm -hmm. like, you, you kind of have to figure out how it's all put together at times. That's fair. I like that a little too. It's kind of nice. Yeah. I feel like in a weird way, I'm playing a Sudoku puzzle. Kind of. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of see that. Like I'm taking apart a little mystery. Oop. Okay, that's not what I want to be taking apart. Um... Uh, this piece. Okay. Uh, will this come apart now? No, nope, this piece also needs to come off. Okay. Yep. It's it. I just saw a gap, so that means that it's uh it's now detached. So now I can just pull this thing off. Like this. And that should reveal, yep, the radiation containment unit and everything else. Perfect. Disable those tethers. I don't need those that to go any further back. Okay. Keep those lights out before I forget about them. Oh, cool! There's another hidden fuel tank. I love that. Oh yeah, it's great. From my experience, uh, the best strategy tends to be just get all the outer fuel tanks or all the outer uh, panels off by whatever means you can and then worry about everything that's inside that that seems to have worked well for most ships yeah i'm gonna do that right now i'm gonna take off those up uh, these other panels My grapple is fine. It's at 75%. Jeez. I really want you to spend your money. I think I'm about to hit salvage wall three, which is nice. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's take care of this uh, radiation unit. I just realized I shouldn't be doing that while there's still power in the system. God damn it. Okay, we're going to hold off on that for a moment. Uh, be, and let's let's deal with this fuel tank first. Wait, what's that? All right, I'm going to pray for a minute that I'm going to disconnect this pipeline from this part of the engine sh uh, the engine and it's not going to explode. All right. Here we go. Processing object. I'm going to stand back as far as I can. It's going to hurt a lot if I'm wrong. I think I'm good. Ow. Ow, fuck. No, it exploded. It exploded. Salvage goal five isn't one tank, and I and I'm already I can't do salvage goal five. Well, one tank. It tends to be everything around it that also hurts you. Material accepted. Credit well, nothing really got all that damaged. It was only one tank. That's surprising. I mean, to be fair, oh, I've no. picked the ship pretty God clean. That won't come out, really. Well, that's worse shit. All right. I guess that coolant tank's just staying in there. Uh, okay, so that should 
allow that next ring to come out. Oh, don't, don't nudge the, uh, the radiation containment unit. That's how you get radiation. That's how we get ants. <laughs> Radioactive ants. Okay, hang on. How do I get this thing off? Okay. Maybe I can just pull it off. Yeah. I can pull it off. I'm stupid. We all make mistakes. Uh, nope. That's not coming off. Why is that not coming apart? It's not that simple, apparently. Okay. Uh, let's... Let's cut some more things and hope that... This all just kind of comes apart. There's a shockingly small number of cut points. Like, this whole thing is being held together with hopes and dreams. I feel like. Um, hey, chat. How uh, disorienting is it to watch me spin like that? Uh, <laughs> Just Yodi violently throwing up in the background. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So now that should pull fairly linearly. Come on. Detach. Yes, okay, detached. God, that's satisfying. Razor, I don't want to do laundry today. <laughs> then don't do it. I have to do lunch today. Why? Because I need clean clothes and my laundry hamper's full. Why do you that need to clean to clothes? You work from home. I need clean clothes because I'm not a fucking animal race. <laughs> well, I'm being called out. Yo, hard out. is being trans. <laughs> being called out super hard. Okay, chat. If you don't need to leave the house today, are uh, how many of you are perfectly comfortable with putting on the same clothing you wore yesterday? I mean, I wear the same clothing like for like one, two days, but... I still need to do things like change certain pieces of my clothing that or else I don't want to I don't want to smell bad or anything. Sounds like you need more clothing. Your I can't your, just... your your bandwidth is limited by the uh, amount of clothing you have rather than how frequently you are capable of doing laundry. I mean it's both, but you know, that one's the that one's far Lazier. <laughs> Just buy more clothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> Especially the stuff that I think you're thinking of, which is like undergarments, which, like, yeah, just buy yes. more of those. No, that's not how this works. Those are like the least expensive clothing that you can get, I guess, other than t shirts, maybe. I'm just spinning out of control. Fuck. <laughs> Okay, now we just carefully lower this radiation filter into the salvage. Just like that. There we go. I'm I'm afraid to like use the boost button on the on these things. Because I've been told that they're really bad. So I just don't. Did it go in? There it goes. All right. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. Okay. Electrical. You're doing work stuff. I actually been. I haven't been looking at the chat like at all. Neither have I. This game is very addicting. Yeah. And surprisingly deep. Like that like usually games like this, they don't have a lot of like unique content. Like it sort of gets stale after a f like a couple hours. But I'm on like hour 20 of this game. And Damn. 
still still like real satisfying the the fact that like the ships are partially randomized and i, I keep getting like new ships to explore is uh kind of cool a lot of praise for the developers of this game from me who are the developers of this game oh praise i'm glad you asked um no i i don't know <laughs> yeah we don't we have no fucking clue i i what you you think I you think I I watched the intro uh, sequence? I don't know. Gosh, you're you're sucking their dig over here. You may as well like go the whole shaft. <laughs> what you you think I know the name of everybody who I've sucked dick? <laughs> <laughs> what do you take me for? Some kind of like regular human c citizen or whatever? <laughs> fucking, fucking hello, citizen. Fucking, fucking take every developer out on like three dates before I bring them to the bedroom. I'm mixing up my analogy a little bit here, I think. Maybe, maybe just a little. <laughs> hey, game developers, hit me up. Slide, slide into my DMs. <laughs> yeah, this whole thing is going straight into a furnace. Okay, good. Get in there. I Get in there. Get in there. Get. Sounds fucking... like you're talking to a cat. I basically am. I'm trying to push it, and by pushing it, it's pushing me away. <laughs> and that that likely tells you that it's too heavy for you to push. You're well, gonna have to, gonna have to cut it up it? into smaller pieces. The tethers will solve that problem, but until you have those, you kind of just have to cut it up into smaller pieces. How do I cut it? I mean, are these cutter points? Or just like leave it and just make it get a new ship. No, I don't want to get a new ship. I like this ship. <laughs> I want... I'm literally inches, inches away from salvage level... Salvage uh, 4. Sounds to me like you but, have a destructive relationship with that ship. Uh. <laughs> I literally took this thing apart piece by piece. I'm fucking not giving up here. God. Every, I mean, I, there's a kink for everything, I guess. Oh, cool. By using this panel, I can push the remainder of the ship over Oh, this yeah, way. you're abusing the broken physics. <laughs> yeah, I am, actually. <laughs> I've, I've had that go horribly wrong for me in the past, so be careful. They, uh, when, when the physics, like, things start bumping into each other, things go horribly wrong. Uh, good rule, don't be inside an enclosed space while trying to, like, move things around that space, by the way. That that's that's when I, a lot of my deaths have happened is when uh, when I like try to fit like something through a hole I miss and just like it suddenly accelerates at unusual speeds causing the whole thing to just like collide with me. It's not a good time. Ow! Damn. Damn it. God damn it, I pulled it too fast towards me and it smacked me in the face. <sighs> Suit patch. Alright, we're good. There's like, there's two environments that I consider to be the most spooky. Uh, it, that's uh -huh. outer space and the ocean. Uh huh. And uh, this game kind of pretty well captures some of that. Like like how when you when you get hit, your radio starts malfunctioning, and that's just like kind of spooky. I feel that. Yeah. Just like it, it makes you feel like, oh no, my safety net. I'm I'm vulnerable. How do I cut more of the ship out? I don't know. The, uh, the, the line, it's not you, it's me, tends to work well, from what I've heard. Hardy har, Razor. Hardy fucking har. Uh. <laughs> Salvage deposit secured. Credits awarded. Okay, we got a hydroponics cabinet. It's in the salvage. Actually, I should d disconnect the batteries, too. There's still some power running through this ship. I think. Yeah, still power. Okay, hang on. 
I know my fuel levels are low. I literally just want to finish this ship. It's literally right fucking there. Please, is there something I can cut off this ship that'll make sure I don't fucking lose all the progress I've been making? Hang on, let's see here. Maybe this... No, I don't want to cut off random panels. Here, yeah, cut this... Cut the structure thing. off. Yeah. Huh? Alright. All right. Eep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of there. There we go. Good job. Okay. Uh, let's... Actually, let's pull the casing off of the... Uh, this thing. Oh, that's not all the way in yet. Let's just stick that in. There we go. All right, let's get the casing off of the uh, the front. While we're at it. Wait, what? Oh, right, that's where I cut a hole in uh, in that AI thing. Um, okay. Oh, fuck, I'm on fire! I'm on fire! I'm on fire! <laughs> oh no! Don't you fucking giggle and then retroactively go, oh no. <laughs> Animal. No, not believable? Damn. No, um, no, not believable at all, really. Well, I mean, it's the thought that counts. You'll get there someday. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just gonna keep doubling down on on, on this whole emotionless uh, asshole routine that I've got going for me. Oh, good. Uh, um. Huh. Hey, chat, could you guys just, like, double-check? When I move around, is it choppy for you guys? It's a little choppy on my end. Well, yeah, so OBS was, like, the preview is kind of choppy. Oh, yeah, we're we're losing a lot of to rendering lag. Okay. You know what? Uh, sorry, I kind of have to stop streaming to you. <laughs> oh, that's fair. Um, Because I think that's part of it. Hang on. Let me just... Check my GPU for a second. Uh, okay, GPU is within normal areas. Reset the statistics and let's hope that that doesn't keep happening. Um, sorry, guys. I guess it wasn't bothering anyone because nobody spoke up. It wasn't bothering me. I was just I I I'm, I'm busy playing Space Game. Oh, YouTube's gonna hate me for that. <sighs> Sorry, YouTube. This game is very involved, and I wasn't paying attention. Ow! Fuck. Well, don't do that. <laughs> Doesn't hear you, little shit. <laughs> Sorry, I just Christ. I'm I'm damn, really dying. I, 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 I enjoy it. just like the just whenever somebody says "ow," I just the response of just like "don't do that" is so completely non-productive. Yeah, I need to go fix up my my gear. I'm it. dying. Oh no! Well, don't do that. I'm trying not to, Razor. I'm trying not to. <laughs> do or do not. There is no try. I know my fuel levels are critical, that's why I'm here. Don't knock. The soup patch, okay, soup patch is good. Rest your fuel. I might actually need more thrust or fuel. Or no, uh, door break in. Okay, I want to rant about something real quick. Um, huh. and, and I get that there's like industry reasons for this, but still. I love technology in a way like so many so few people do and so i'm i, I like uh experiencing the like latest and greatest in tech it's an expensive hobby i don't partake in it as much as i used to but um one of the things that i've been like really really excited for when it comes to like tech advancements is uh -huh. um quantum dot oled displays 
Um, okay. I mean, it's it's two different technologies. For those of you who are about to go, um, actually, in the comments, I see you, YouTube. Don't at me. Um, but People like, at us? Uh, OLED technology is already like a really cool thing. Um, it's it's made its way into cell phones. I've got I've got an iPhone 15 or, or not 15. Jeez, like a a 10 or 11 or whatever. Um, with an OLED uh, screen and. The coolest thing about OLED is that it's, uh, for those of you who don't know, has, um, it's like, uh, every screen before OLED, uh, when it, when it's showing a black screen or part of the screen is black, it's not actually black. Um, because there, it, the backlight still needs to be on even if the, the pixels are blocking that light, right? Um, uh -huh. There's probably way more in-depth explanations of how this shit works. But the point is, is that OLED has really, really inky blacks, which is fucking sick. Uh, it, 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 like, changes the contrast ratio from, like, one, in, one to 1,000 to, like, one to one million. It's really, really significant. Um... So that's one thing that I'm looking forward to, but the problem is, is that's never really made its way significantly into monitors yet, because uh, they it has it has extreme burn-in issues. Um, if if you if you keep the same image on the screen for extended periods of time, which for computer monitors uh, is a unique like problem compared to TVs or cell phones, which typically don't have elements of the screen that are the same thing all the time. I'm looking at you, the, t the Windows taskbar. Um, but, uh, so, like, monitors haven't really adopted OLED as much as other things. And OLED has kind of remained an expensive thing. Um, but Quantum Dot uh, OLED in particular goes above because qu what Quantum Dots are Oh god. Um first of all, Penelope, do you know what I'm talking about here? No, but continue. Okay, cool. Please. Then then you're going to you're going to experience this rant. Uh Oh, well. I am. Oh, um well, it's not a rant, it's more like just an explanation of what it is, but it's really cool. Um Quantum Dots is this uh really trippy technology that, uh or not even technology. It's like just a material. Um that whereas before screens uh, like LCD screens um, they have a layer of pixels right um, typically made up of sub pixels so there's usually like a red a green and a blue one um, hence the acronym RGB um, mm -hmm. and so each pixel is made up of three sub pixels and but all of those pixels uh, behind them have a white backlight typically um, and so the pixels don't actually create light. What they do is they uh, filter, they block or, or unblock the light uh -huh. behind it. Uh -huh. So the red pixel is not actually making red light. It's taking white light and filtering it to make it look red. Okay. Um, but uh, as we all know, filters don't, uh, th th what they do is they block every color except the color that's being allowed through. Didn't know that, but okay, go ahead. You didn't. Okay. Well, that that's how they work. They they block all the type the the parts of the light except for the the color that they're designed to let through. Um, uh -huh. Well, as you might imagine, if you're blocking light, what does that do to the light? Like, how much light are you getting then if, if some of it's blocked? You're getting less of it, right? Uh -huh. um, so no idea. No idea what you're talking about. Still. Well, if block you block light, you get less light. No idea what that's. <laughs> Okay. Go ahead. Thanks for giving me my own medicine. Um, well, then, so the, the the cool thing about quantum dots and the reason why they're so like important for display technology is, well, if you're blocking light, uh, energy can't be created or destroyed. It can. Uh, so if if the light is blocked, it turns into heat, which uh, is a problem for OLED panels because heat makes them last not as long and creates more burn in. Um. Huh. So it's bad for longevity and part of the reason why OLED panels uh, have kind of had a problem. They, they tend to need heat management systems uh, more than any other type of uh, screen. Um, and so uh, what quantum dots do is they're not a filter. 
what they are is they're a material that when uh, a certain type of energy is given to it, uh, typically UV light, um, they, they don't filter the light. They simply convert it all into a specific color. Um, and it, it, it's actually like, it has to do with the size of the material's particles. Like the size determines the color that the quantum dots like create. It's, it's like a really like fu futuristic technology. It's really cool if you ever want to like read up in, on it. But the simple truth is, is it means that you get brighter colors, like more vivid colors out of the display coupled with the inky blackness of OLED. And they're supposedly, I've never experienced one, but they're supposedly like the most um, beautiful uh, screens that you can experience currently. And uh, okay. I want to, I want to have one. I like, I, I, I want, I would love to get one of those for my main computer monitor, just like. And like my middle monitor that I use for gaming and like all my all all my primary tasks, right? Um, the problem is, is that for the last like two years or whatever that they've been out. And to be fair, um, I probably shouldn't buy the first ones that are available because you're you're gonna experience like growing pains um, if you buy a, a brand new technology. Uh, uh -huh. But um, like they've all been. All the monitors that have had the uh, technology have been like 30 inches or, or larger. And that's a problem for me because I run a triple monitor setup. I'm not willing to give that up. I'm obviously not going to replace all three monitors. Um, like, and so I need a 27 inch monitor. I'm not willing to, to like compromise on the size of my monitor. But they don't make them, s like, in small sizes. I mean, small, comparatively. 27 was a big monitor size up until recently. Um, and so it's just, like, pissing me off. And, and But the cool thing is, is, like, um, I, there's, like, a next generation of QD OLED displays. By the way, they're all made by Samsung. I, I think Samsung yeah. owns the patent, so, like, nobody else is allowed to make QD OLED displays. Um, wow. Wow. So, and, and so all all the manufacturers that put them in their monitors, they, they're getting them from Samsung. Um, and so, but but that means that like um, now now that they're they're actually like getting to near that point. I think Alienware has one that's coming out that's 27 inches, and I'm like keeping my eye on it. A price hasn't been released yet. I'm fully expecting it to be like close to a thousand dollars or something crazy because it's it's clearly like a high end gaming monitor al like already mm -hmm. if it's Alienware. Um, but like, I want it. I want it so bad. I need it in my life. Oh, hi. It's, uh, it's like, I mean, HDR is another thing that, that like people have been talking about. Uh, QD OLED, uh, displays pretty much have all, all of them have HDR capability. Do you know what HDR is? Are, am I, if I lost you again? High definition resolution? Uh, close. High dynamic range. Ah, that um, was not close at all. Then. Basi basically displays uh, the resolution. Uh, resolution is no longer like it's it stopped being uh, the be all and end all for displays. Like more pixels is not more good anymore because it just it just means you get less light because uh, the it's like a it's like a screen door effect. The uh -huh. smaller the holes, the less light gets through, um, and so that that's that's the problem with like high resolution displays. Coupled with the fact that, especially for computers, um, more pixels means more work for your computer, um, for your graphics card. So like that's not really worth it. A, for example, a 4090 still cannot run a like f uh, some games at 4K. Um, at, at like reasonable frame rates like 20 frames per second is probably the most you'll get out of like a 4090 at 4k for, out of like mm -hmm. um uh what's that cyberpunk cyberpunk in, in, is one of like the big ones so yeah. like 4k is not really the technology you want when you're gaming but uh hdr 
uh, is just more range for your colors. More range for your brightness, specifically. Um, like, displays don't run, don't have the full uh, range of brightness that the human eye is capable of experiencing. Like, well, not exactly. The human eye has a dynamic range of brightness that it can experience. Like the retina itself, uh, monitors can can cover the full range of the retina, but th your iris changes the amount of light that gets into your eye, right? Um, uh -huh. And so when uh, Hun, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, you've gotten me lost again. <laughs> Look, you like if I hadn't worked today and like you sat me down and explained this to me, I probably could follow along because quantum quantum uh, QLED displays. And Quantum Dot is super cool, and I love it. But I've got work brain right now. Okay, okay. Anyways. You, I've got mold growing on this fucking deer brain, right? It's it's all okay. about contrast and brightness, is is my conclusion. All about con. Yeah, just like it always is. <laughs> well, no, and only recently. Like, and until then, it was all about resolution. Do you remember when CRTs switched over, uh, away from like away from CRTs to um. LCDs and like LCDs. plasma. Yeah. yeah, that was the big thing. Was that was diffusion of pixels and stuff, and like yeah. definition of pixels. Because pixels, pixels on a CRT monitor oftentimes um, well, diffuse they... across other neighbored pixels, and so yeah. it causes an interesting definition effect. It's all like this. This argument yeah. comes across every time we get a brand new leaf. It's just like the yeah. the fucking the definition of everything. It's like it's it's. It's always the most in a, uh, integral part of it, and learning how to cope with the new technology is always the the big hurdle for everyone. Sort of, yeah. So like, 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 um, like the the, the big thing that you, that you're kind of talking about there is that um, games made for older consoles were designed graphically uh, to work with CRTs, so they actually look better on a CRT than they do on like a an LCD yeah. like pixel display. Yeah, they do because because they were designed that way for the pixels to diffuse that way. Yeah. Everything looks a little too sharp if it was as if it, as if there oh, was yeah. it's because it's more defined, it's less interesting to look at and our brain yeah. has, uh, well, has there, less to fill in. Well, it's it's also just like those graphics designed for um, CRTs look sharper on CRTs like you get more detail and, and and a better image out of a CRT than uh, with those games than you do with a um on if you like hook it up to an LCD display or anything like that's, I the, disagree, that's the big thing but I think the sharpness is the issue I think it's more sharp on, on an LCD but the problem is it's making oh, it too sharp I I I, I've got some LTT videos to show you then uh, that'll that'll tell you what, what I mean like it's it's something that you don't realize unless you see them side by side. No, no, I know. I've seen them side by side. With like, I remember doing a like doing a, an investigation on Castlevania Symphony of the Night for this very topic. Oh, okay. Um, and I, it's like the sharpness because like when you compare the two side by side, the sharpness of the L, of the LCD monitor. I fucking keep forgetting LCD stupid work print. LCD monitor. It's really really sharp but the pixels for his eyes look like they're just like little red dots and mm -hmm. it's super weird but, the, but on the crt monitor it the pixels diffuse across our neighbors and it creates this really elusive sort of effect it's like oh well, yeah. yeah no i well that 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 effect is something that the game developer designed for like the that that's the intent like it, yeah it, they, they couldn't those graphics are intended to be diffused because the original console didn't have very many colors, but what they could do, because things diffuse, uh, they could actually use the CRT's less than stellar technology. Honestly, like it's it's a flawed technology, and that's why it, it it's gone. But the, the the flaws actually worked to, to the game developer's advantage in some cases because they could get more colors by diffusing neighboring pixels to like create yeah exactly colors. Like add two colors together, sort of thing. Um, that's why. That's like that, that's, that's like what I mean by it, by like now. they look better because they're more defined because it looks like the way the game developer intended. To. Well, they're not more defined. They're just they're less defined, but they're diffused across. It. Like the definition here. Like uh, maybe we're just maybe I'm using the word <laughs> definition in a way that you're using the word definition, but I'm trying maybe, to say it's yeah. like because like 
because they're less defined, less sharp images and the diffusions making them more, like it diffuses them across their neighbors, it makes it a more interesting image for our brain to fill in information about. So it's well, less definition. That, gives that, us more. That's what I'm trying to say, though, is like looking looking at them close up. So we agree. We're just disagreeing on the word definition. Well, no, I'm I'm I'm, I'm saying that it's not a brain thing. It's it's an actual. Oh, it's definitely like, a brain thing too. Well, it's not. It is. It's not it's part of our brain. Yeah, no, it is. Our brain has a brain. Our brain likes images that we fill in with information more than in the images that we don't. That's, no, that's, that's not part it of, that's, at all. Uh, they, well, that's a big part of it, yeah. The, I, my, it, that's, it, the, that's the psychology of images. Well, no, it's not. It's not a psychology. Well, okay, there might be some psychology associated with it, but what I'm saying is that there is also a technolo technology benefit. Like it doesn't just. It it it, it is demonstrably like the brain stuff is not uh, measurably. Uh, different, right? Like that. That's what I'm trying to say. Is that it, there's a, an actual measurable benefit to playing a game that's designed on, for a CR CRT on a CRT. That's that's what I'm yeah. trying to say. Like the 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 game is uh, measurably higher fidelity on a CRT than it is on on an LCD to screen. Okay. That's all, that's all I'm trying to say is it's it's not it's not a fuzzy okay, thing okay. like that the, there is actual measurable uh, improvement to the to the image quality. Oh, I see. I think I see. Yeah. I. I yeah, I suppose that's. And and the, the, the like the, the reasoning partially is like I I watched a recent LTT video where they 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 were trying out a new. Um, like retro gamers uh, use uh, put a box between their console and newer TVs to take the old like uh, signal that's designed for a CRT and like make it look better on on a TV that's not designed for CRT signals, basically. Uh -huh. um, and like that that that's part of it is like the. Uh, it, and nowadays, if you wanted to do something like that, you would have to basically take a whole signal processor and um, adjust the image, basically, um, so th so that it looks like it was supposed to, it was intended to look on a CRT. There are okay. other benefits to CRTs too, but when we're talking image quality, that that's part of it. It's yeah, you're right. It's the blending of pixels and the fact that those pixels, um, like the games were designed with the, with that blending in mind. Yeah, we're basically talking about the same thing, but we're you're you're, spe you're talking specifically about the technological benefits. Yeah, I'm talking more about the I, the, the humanistic benefits. Yeah, like, the, the, the the biggest the biggest issue I was just finding with, with your with the way you were describing it was that uh, if if you're just talking about the benefits to the human brain, you, you're it, it makes it sound like it's not measurable. Oops, I need that. That goes down there. Got it in time. Um, that's all. Like it, 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 I'm trying to say that it is measurable. Oh yeah, that's that's fair. I, I wonder the, I was under the impression it was measurable, but I was, um, but it is still measurable even if it's the human brain. It's just, like you could still measure that. It's just not to the technological consensus. It's more of like a, which of these two images look better and consensus by people. Does that make sense? Like it's get, it's it's like up having a bunch of people look at something like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And it's well, like cool. The yeah, reason this does this is yeah, this. Yes, but um, the 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 thing about um, th what you're trying to describe here is that it's not a nebulous concept. The the, the, the what makes an image uh, look better to the human eye is well known. It's contrast. It's um, uh, resolution. Um, it's range. Uh, and uh, like th th there's there's elements to it, uh, color accuracy. That's those sorts of things. And so like okay. it, all of those individual things can be measured, and thus it, it actually does. Uh, and I mean fidelity is a big thing. Like how how true to the original, uh, or how true to what the brain is is expecting to see, uh, is the image. You know, like if the colors are off, that's not that's not a high fidelity. If the um, if if the image like doesn't look right, 
that that's that's a fidelity issue. That's that's what I that's what I mean. Okay. Oh, I have um I have tethers unlocked. Oh good. That that changes the game. Oh, okay. How does how does tethers work exactly? Uh, with your grapple, you hold left trigger to start. Uh, to to pick one section, then you release the trigger to to play, uh, to pick where it goes. Okay. And uh, they only last as, uh, like a minute to start with, and then uh, you can unlock lo uh, like longer lifetime. So, uh, well, the tether is just basically like it'll pull it towards. Yeah, I'll pull two tethered objects together. Yeah, or or if you're just connecting it to the to the side wall of the berth, then it just like pulls it towards that, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's mostly what I use it for. Honestly, even though they like show it in the trailers and stuff to like connect multiple objects together and then send them all into the furnace at once, I find that it's just way more effective to just like connect each object to the furnace one at a time. That way you don't True. have effectively one tether pulling a bunch of heavy things. Instead you have multiple tethers each pulling one light thing. Yeah, that's fair. But that's that's just over mathematizing it. Yeah, what are you, some sort of math magician? Maybe. Salvage secured. Can you, can you show me your mathematical magics, oh math wizard? Um, only if there's no cops around. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. What are you on, Family Feud? Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Uh oh. Okay, so I'm, I'm practically done uh i just need to cut the this thing out from its casing and then everything else goes in the furnace i'm nearly at seven despite fucking up earlier uh, oh your fucking things have seven for yours yeah uh, i've had some that are nine wow uh it it, it, it scales with the value of your ship basically um, the higher value, the more uh, more tiers there are, more, gotcha. more stages. I think it also, reach it also like scales with hazard level, but I think that's just the same thing as the value of the ship, really. Just gotta um, reach into this thing's fucking engine compartment, rip out all the valuable bits out bit by bit, and then then we'll get to the big salvage. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I just send this whole skeleton. Wait, let's see if that. Wait, thing... this whole place, this this building has power. Wait, this uh this thing has power. Uh, some I just realized, some of the on. like individual components, like the the like little computers, sometimes have have a battery stuck to them. You'll see a little purple module on the side of them or something. Oh no, it was a light and stuff that not like one of the emergency lights. Oh well, then that means that your ship might still have a battery somewhere. Oh, good. Yeah, uh, battery, batteries are purple. If you if you're looking for a battery, you you tend to find it between the exterior and interior hulls. So it's in the wall. Yeah. Oh, good. Love that. I feel like I'm saying that more and more often with this fucking game. <laughs> it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's great. like it's that weird like you're you're playing a game that just has you doing work, like menial tasks, but it's it's that satisfaction that comes along with it, you know? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna return to my habit. I think I'm gonna take a break, go make some breakfast yeah. and stuff. I'm 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 we're gonna be uh, ending the stream here once I, once this big hunk of metal uh gets into the furnace. Get in the furnace. In the furnace. Because that's basically all that's between me and uh, my last uh, salvage level. Uh, I might as well clean up these little itty bits. Yep. There we go. Yep. Yeah, fuck it. You yeah, fuck what? it. I'll do. I'll do laundry tomorrow. See, that's the off fucking attitude that that we all love. No, it's it's not an attitude I love. I fucking. <laughs> We have to do it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but that's tomorrow's problem. That was fun. I'm glad I realized I had a steam key.
around. Heck yeah. I have a few steam keys that are just kind of laying around. It's, it's weird that you have them, all that come, just like hanging around. Oh, well, fucking. Yeah. You want to see some of my, my stuff? Got, um. I got WWE 2K23 in here. Cool. Yeah. I, 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 appre I appreciate playing games that make me feel like a, uh, a fucking sports guy with his Xbox in his basement that only owns sports and wrestling games. Yeah. I've I've been in I've been in one of those houses before. Just like yeah. dude. Oh, and Halo. They own Halo too. You you want two free months of IGN Plus? No. <laughs> I wait, IGN? Yeah, IGN. Yeah, IGN Plus. What is Just out here. Hold on. I I'm I'm drawing a blank. What is that? What is that? What is IGN? It's the, it's the gaming network. Is that the ga is that is that a gambling thing? No, a ga gaming thing. It's like um What the fuck? IGN's is like a it's like they're a gaming news network. Oh, they're the news network. Right. Right, right, right. They're 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 a media thing. Okay. The news site. Right. Sorry. What am I thinking of a, a, when it when it comes to like an, an acronym like that that's for gambling. I don't know. You've been doing some gambling? No, but I live near Niagara you Falls, want to? which is uh, a gambling hub for Canada. Oh, I did not know that. Uh, um, I, 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 yeah, Ni Niagara Falls has a few uh, casinos on both sides of the border, so it's um, like, I mean, there are like gambling establishments in a lot of cities in Canada, but like they're typically like bingo halls and shit like they're not not super super big but like we've actually got like a full size like Las Vegas style casino like high rise or like skyscraper sort of thing uh, that in Niagara Falls it's really nice I'll take you there when uh, when you come visit Yay. not to gamble right. I mean unless you want to do that but more so like because um, th there's like really nice restaurants there and really uh really cool shops and it's just like a really beautiful place to be you know yeah yeah I get all you. right um, uh let's clock out yeah oh wait i think i'm super far behind in the stream no i know wait maybe i'm i mean okay. twitch doesn't let you go get behind or anything like that so oh, oh i didn't I, rank I, up I... damn it I found oh. that most of the time with this game, if you hit every salvage goal on, on a ship, uh, you tend to rank up afterwards. Like, it's one ship per rank up, usually, uh. but I, I've recently had a couple times where that, that's not the case, and it kind of sucks. It's time to begin your work do, you, uh, do you want me to do the outro, or do you, do you want to do it? This is your stream. Yeah, go for it. Here. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If indeed you still are, we appreciate your support. And if you'd like to watch more of our content you can follow and possibly even subscribe to us here on twitch we'd love your support if you miss our vods you can check out our vods on youtube and you can watch any vods from the past what seven ten vods on twitch I think it's it's, seven. It, it's 30 days so it 30 works, days it works out to like six to eight depending on yeah. how many times we streamed in a month it's like it's like seven ish um feel free to check us out we're gonna be continuing our undertale yellow stream on monday yeah. next week when we turn from our break which we i just realized we're still streaming on our break razor why are we streaming on our no, this, break? Is break, this is a break stream this is this is relax, uh -huh. this is relaxing stream we're, we're not actually working uh -huh. right now okay calm down i guess i, I think it was pretty relaxed that whole time yeah, yeah. Um, no, no I, I did not give a fuck about the stream. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, thank you all again so much for watching, and I hope to see you on Monday. And hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Yeah. Good night, every shit. I've good morning, everybody. Well, good afternoon for those of you on the Eastern Time Zone, and for those of you across the the seas. Fucking good day. Bye. Good morning. <laughs> Bye, everyone.